Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and I'm going to be playing some Arkham Horror, the living card game published by Fancy Flight Games. Today we're playing with the revised core set only, sort of. Playing with the starter deck, we're going to play Roland, going through the uh, Night of the Zealot campaign. We're going to play just the first scenario today to be kind of uh, new player-ish friendly, uh, so that way we're not spoiling too much. The first scenario is a tutorial scenario, meant to be replayed multiple times till you get a grip on the game, you know, test your decks, figure out how the starter decks work, which class you want to play and that kind of stuff. So that's what we're focused on today. So kind of spoiler warning, but I mean, like you got to learn somehow, right? So uh, I'd rather play this scenario and show it off than be playing like a standalone scenario or something, um, which are probably, you know, you don't want to play those right away anyway. <laughs> Hello, Sakabra. Hey, Kanji. Uh, Sakabra says, welcome to Rob's Arkham Horror Channel. All Cthulhu all the time. Yes. Yes. I've been bugged about playing this game solo for like the last year. Um, we only got into this game sometime in the last year. I, I don't remember how long it's been. We played through a bunch of the campaigns already. All that stuff is linked down in the video description. I am not an expert on this game per se. I haven't been following it for the five whatever years it's been out. I think it's about five almost exactly now. Um, yeah, we, we held off. I already had enough LCGs um, that were, um, you know, making money disappear out of my bank account and wallet and stuff. So I didn't want to take on another one. But thank you to the support of the awesome people right here. Thanks to these awesome people, uh, I was able to allocate some budget towards buying up all the packs, all the cards uh, for this game. And uh, you guys kept watching, and everyone kept playing along during our campaigns and stuff. So we've been playing this game a bunch over the last little while. Um, but a new revised core set's come out. A new entry point for players into the game. Uh, actually, it's on the screen right there. This thing. Uh, the taller, larger, more expensive box uh, core set. And it's more expensive because you don't need to buy two to get all the cards. You need to build decks to go play with your friends uh, or solo. Um, is, this is a $60 box, MSRP, uh, US $60. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember what I paid. I just, I just paid and, you know, I don't want to know. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. So I bought this, uh, core set to take a look at it, to try it out. I know all that's really different is some tokens. Um, and they, uh, I guess added some errata and stuff to the rule books. They also made larger rule books, changed some art on cards. All this stuff I talked about in my unboxing video, you can find that in the video description uh, in the playlist for the revised core set. Uh, but the main thing, the main thing, it came with a dice bag. That's, uh, that's, that's green, I swear. That's green, not see-through. Uh, which is supposedly glow in the dark, but uh, I had it under studio lighting for a day and then checked after and, I mean, it, it kind of glows, but I mean, again, I, I haven't played the game with the lights completely off yet to find out. So uh, maybe we'll do that today. Maybe we'll play completely in the dark um, to see the glow in the dark bag. Uh, but yeah, it came with a Mythos bag, came with some new tokens, came with some uh, different art on some cards. Uh, but more importantly, gameplay wise, uh, since it works for four players now, the core set, the original core set, which you'll find for cheaper, only played one to two players. Uh, so if you want to play with more, you need to buy another core set. And if you needed, you know, multiple copies of each of the cards to build decks with, you need an extra core set. Um, but this supposedly has all of it in here for four players. They've added some tokens and whatnot, but uh, for gameplay, they added the uh, some extra level up cards, some extra higher than level zero cards for when you're spending experience between campaign scenarios to upgrade your deck. And I'm sure they did that. Uh, they pulled some of them out of early expansions. So if you already own all the game, you already have these. Uh, so you can play along, you can build the starter decks that are included in the base game. I couldn't find the PDF for the revised core set, um, but in there, I will look at it. Uh, it has uh, the learn to play uh, starter decks uh, for each of the characters listed and a write up on them, which is cool. We'll look at that for Roland. Um, so if you ever want to like build decks and then return it back to the starter decks or whatever, you can do that. Uh, similar to what we see in Marvel Champions and stuff, which is pretty cool. So today we're going to be playing with Roland's starter deck, and the deck is not that uh, not that hot, but uh, at least it gives you a, a taste of the game using all the cards you know for four players. They divvy them up, um, and that's what we're going to play with today. So we're going to go through the very basic first scenario of the game, which is meant to be a tutorial. Then tomorrow we're back live streaming. 
where I'll continue the campaign. So if you want to avoid spoilers, just don't tune in for that. Because uh, we'll be going to the spoilers for the second and third scenario for this uh, Knight of the Zealot campaign from the Revised Corset. And then next week, uh, I plan on using the entire card pool uh, that exists. We'll build a rolling deck uh, or put together a rolling deck that Yogi built for us. And we're going to play through Return to the Knight of the Zealot, um, which it adds a bunch of cards and changes things up, turns the first scenario into like a real scenario, not a tutorial one to hold your hands kind of thing. Um, so I just want to see what this Return to box, I've never played with a Return to box. I, haven't even, I don't even think I opened the cards for that one. Um, to sort them in yet, so uh, that's my plan. Just to try this game solo. I played Roland before. He's supposed to be a pretty good solo investigator, so I'm just going to focus on Rolo for, Roland, Roland for now, in solo, and try this game out solo. See, see how it is. Supposedly it's pretty good. Supposedly it's pretty good. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. We got some more people uh, you know, coming in here. Let's see. <laughs> hey, Janet. Been waiting for so long. I know, that's what I was saying. I, I've been avoiding this for so long and saying I'm going to do it. Uh, but I was like thinking the revised core set comes out. It's a good time to kind of show it off. And we'll, we'll totally talk about cards. I'll try not to use slang. I'll try not to shortcut things. This will be a longer playthrough of the first scenario because I'm sure if you know what you're doing, you can uh, go through the first scenario in like 20 minutes solo. I'm sure. I'm sure that. Or probably look faster if you know what you're doing. Um, but we're going to walk through it. You know, so if you don't know the game that well, you buckle in. Uh, we're going to go through it like I do with other games on the channel. Um, you know, when we're playing the first scenario of something uh, with new players in mind. So we're not going to have all the advanced cards or anything from expansions and deluxe boxes and mythos packs. <laughs> Yogi's, <laughs> Yogi's here. So long is like 30 minutes. Yeah, right. Uh, we're going to be here for like three hours probably. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh... Ernie Forrest says, Wendy is the best for solo. Roland is so hard to get clues. Wendy. Is Wendy the, the little survivor one? I, I'm bad with names, FYI. Uh, Wendy. Or is Wendy the mystic? Daisy's a seeker. Okay, hold on. Yeah, Wendy's a survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wendy's awesome, obviously. So, I don't know. Do we do that in the future? Do we play with different ones? I'm just doing Roland because I want to try Roland. I like Roland. He's like one of the first investigators I played in the game. So I'm going back to my, my newbie roots. Adam Morris, thank you for the super chat. Says for a successful solo campaign. Good luck, Rob. Uh, oh, a new subscriber, Thomas. Thank you so much for subscribing. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Also, there was a subscriber on the starting soon screen there I saw. Uh, Alberto Lopez, thank you so much for subscribing earlier. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we are going to play solo, newbie, uh, like I said, I'm not a pro, and a successful campaign, Adam. Uh, in this game, I don't know what successful is, because like winning or losing is not always so clear. You know, there's like kind of best endings, okay endings, like in every Arkham themed, uh, you know, Cthulhu, Lovecraft, kind of mythos themed game. You never know, like, did we really win? Do we really lose? Uh, is there a win? I, I don't know. <laughs> but we'll just play through. We'll have some fun. You guys will help me make some choices and decisions. Um, so yeah, we should probably talk about the deck. Spencer's here. Hey, Spencer. My mind is ready to unravel, and my bib is secured and ready for drool. Oh, no. <laughs> Genji says, you never win in Arkham. You just do a little better each time. Ah... Uh... I don't know, even the word better, like, using positive words in this game, or in these games in general, you know, like, even if you have, like, a, the best ending in the game mechanics side of things, like, you know, you had the best dice rolls or card draws in an Arkham-themed game, uh, you get an ending where it's like, you know, half the city was still eaten, and there's monsters running around, and you had to kill somebody you know, because they went insane, and, you know, this kind of stuff, and now you're drinking whiskey for breakfast and this is like your best ending you know what i mean like <laughs> this is what i'm saying like thematically thematically and then the, the way the gameplay lines up sometimes it's like i think we got the best ending you know only a few cultists uh you know were, were sacrificed uh trying to summon an old one i think we won <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> oh man 
Thank you, Adam, so much. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, no subscriber count, Dan. I was too busy uh, trying to figure out the Arkham Cards app, which we'll try on stream today. Uh, so I spent my morning trying to figure that out. I I've never used the Arkham Cards app. You guys always recommend it on our campaigns. I always use the Arkham DB website, so I was figuring out how to link that up today. Uh, I got it running. I should be able to bring it up in stream, and we'll use that for this campaign to kind of showcase it but i'm new to it so you know it might help new players that are coming into this to find some of the cool things you can use some of the free resources out there on the internet to help you uh you know organize this game build decks run campaigns all that stuff so yeah stay tuned for that too uh so yeah uh but the, the subscriber count um let's see let's see i know i know it shows like a rounded up count below but it's uh we're 19 subscribers away from hitting 13K. So thank you everyone, all 12,981 of you that subscribed and even those that subscribed and then unsubscribed and left. Uh, I appreciate, you know, joining me along the journey. The past, uh, what year are we in? I think the past seven plus years we've been making online tabletop gaming content. So thank you, thank you so much. Maybe it's six. 2013, I think I, I started the original videos that I, I had and deleted and on Twitch we were streaming back then. 2013. So yeah, I don't I don't know. Seven, eight, eight years, eight-ish years. Yeah, has, I think it's just over eight years. We've probably been uh probably been doing this stuff. A little live stream, a little video, video producing, uh some very horrible quality stuff those many years ago. All the cool, cool equipment wasn't available at such uh Nice prices back then, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Bob says there's no winning in Arkham Horror LCG, just those that lose the least. All right, let's get to it. Uh, so, for those that are watching later or live who've never heard of the game, I should probably scale it back a little bit. So this is BoardGameGeek.com. If you don't know, a uh, great resource for tabletop games. Uh, this game is ranked 23 overall out of all, like, you know, 90,000 whatever games in the database. I don't know what the number is. Somebody always, somebody always pops up and, and says how many ranked things are on the database. There's more than that, I'm pretty sure. But uh, maybe there's less. I don't know. Anyways, there's a lot. And this to be in the top 100, that's like a huge achievement. Uh, so this game is beloved amongst hardcore tabletop fans that browse the BoardGameGeek.com website, which is a great resource. You can find tons of files to print, printer-friendly uh, campaign guides. You can find dividers. You can find fan-made reference sheets. You can find videos from weirdo YouTubers like me uh, covering the game. You can chat in the forums about variants and strategies and questions and where to find the damn mythos pack you're missing for your campaign. All this kind of stuff uh, is on here. But this game is a 3.46 weight, so it is not a lightweight game by any means. It is definitely a hardcore game, a uh, more heavier game. Um, but it's not so daunting. Like, you shouldn't be scared, but it is like a lifestyle game, so it's a game you're not meant to, like, you know buy the game in a box and kind of play it once a year with your friends, you can. Just make sure you spend like half a day reading rules before you do that. Uh, this game is meant to be played, you know, like weekly or monthly kind of thing with your friends or yourself, uh, going through campaigns, buying constantly released product. This game's been out for five years. Uh, it came out with a core set. Eventually had a standalone, standalone pack started coming out. Mythos packs, which are part of campaigns, started coming out with deluxe boxes kicking those off. They come out in 120 ish dollar campaign cycles. Uh, and to play through the campaign, you kind of want to have all six Mythos packs in a deluxe box. They're erasing that, they're starting over, they're containing, or they're gonna release uh, the scenarios in one box, the investigators for that, that line in another box. So you only have to track down two boxes to kind of have all the cards from a cycle, a campaign. Uh, as you go and you do you can buy a campaign in any order you want you do not need to buy the first campaign that was, was released you can buy a core set play the campaign in the core set get used to the game and then pick a campaign that's based in whichever part of the arkham horror theme lore whatever that you want so if you want to buy a campaign that goes to alaska 
uh, you know, some madness in the mountains, whatever, uh, you can do that when that releases uh, in hopefully the next couple months. Or if you want to, you know, just hang out in Arkham, go grab Dunwich Legacy, you know. If you want to go travel the jungles and go into temples, start tracking down the Forgotten Age stuff. But that stuff will be reprinted in better, easier to find, cheaper packaging later. Uh, so stay tuned. But yeah, so, so much stuff for this game. This game's been pumping out content pretty much monthly for five years. So there's a lot of packs, a lot of boxes, a lot of standalone scenarios, investigator starter packs, which you can buy to get new player friendly uh, investigator packs to play with, different investigators, different player cards, that kind of thing. There's a ton for this game. Uh, if you're new to it, have fun diving down the rabbit hole, but you can just try the core set. Try the core set, you get a good taste of the game, you get a good taste of all five classes. Uh, well, I guess there's another kind of neutral class thing, but. Uh, you get a taste of the classes, you get a taste of how the game works, how it flows, how the campaign structure works. And after that, you decide whether you burn it uh, or you continue on and uh, go broke. Um, but yeah, that's up to you. So we're going to focus on the new revised core set, which just released uh, in uh, September slash October 2021. Um, and that's what we're playing with today. So yeah. Yeah, I think that covers it. Uh, so it's a living card game. You build decks before you play. Before you play, so living just means it's constantly releasing content. It's not like a collectible card game where things are have rarities. Uh, every pack has a fixed amount of cards. You should get all the cards you need in a pack. You do not need to chase down certain cards. You shouldn't. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we're playing today. Arkham Horror, the card game, which is a card game version of the Arkham Horror board game, which has been around since the 1980s and has had three revisions and is a obviously a pretty popular game for many companies uh you know still doing this lovecraft theme uh you know pumping out lovecraft theme board games like crazy it seems for decades so it's obviously a hot property um and yeah so there's a card game version of that and uh, hopefully it stays around for lots of years uh since they just rebooted the core set kind of thing so it's great jumping point in for the game and yeah hopefully i covered all that Hopefully, hopefully I covered everything there. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. There's other people in the chat who I know have way more experience with this game than I have. They help me get into this game. They help me understand card value, decks, and these kind of things, and gameplay efficiencies and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they're all in the chat. So if you have any questions, you're a new player and you're watching live, don't be afraid to ask, you know, what to buy here? When does this come out? How does this work? You know, ask questions. I'll try to answer what I can. Um, if you're watching this later, drop stuff in the comments below. I'll try to answer what I can. Um, or maybe other people answer sometimes. They, they answer faster than I do. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for help, again, check out BoardGameGeek.com. Go in the forum section. Uh, you know, there's Facebook groups for this game. You can ask questions in there and that kind of stuff. So do not be afraid of the game based on this 3.46 complexity rating. Um, it's not that bad, especially at first. It's kind of like a slimmed down version. The game eventually gets bloated and grows and adds keywords and complexities and FAQ entries and rules things and weird card combinations started coming up and taboo lists and all these things uh but yeah yeah yep 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 so again the revised core set is this thing came out october 1st supposedly um some people had it earlier some people have it later uh but yeah 60 dollars usd this is a revised core set which i'm playing from find all the information fantasyflightgames.com and a good resource to help you out uh while, I while i'm on this scene here uh, is the rules pop which I've linked down in the video description this is a like rules reference unofficial sheet on steroids it basically pulls everything from the FAQ the rules reference guide and you can bring this up on your phone it's just a website a web app and you want to know you know setup we're going to go through you literally click setting up the game and it's right here you don't have to go grab your book you don't have to go through it if you just have your phone with you you know you're playing at a game store with your friends uh, you know, you want to go through here, you're like, wait, what are resources? Uh, you know, it's like a wiki style page uh, or app. It'll bring you to what you need. Wait, what's an ability? You click that. Okay, here's everything about abilities. You know, pulls it all from the, the rules reference and FAQ. Very helpful resource. Use it. Because obviously this game is not the simplest game. It's pretty complex, like I said. Um, but you want to get to the FAQ. Rulings, terms, scenario, rata, all this stuff. It's all on here. Uh, yeah. I don't know why that's all highlighted, but... but yeah, this should be helpful. I always keep this open when we're playing, just so uh, in case we need to look something up fast. It's faster than flipping through the book, you know? 
Usually, usually. Uh, but yeah. Yo, yo, yo. So we're playing as Roland, uh, which I have the deck spread out here. This is the starter deck. I kind of went through it, was looking at it, sleeved it up, obviously. Uh, so Roland Banks, he's an investigator. Uh, his stats across the top, he's got three will, three intellect, four fight or strength. I'm not sure what it is in this game, I forget. And two agility, every, you know, mythos game, Cthulhu mythos team game, Arkham game, whatever. Uh, you know, they use sometimes different words, different symbols. Uh, but they're all the same. Uh, then we have Agency, Detective, Traded. Uh, he has a reaction after you defeat an enemy. Discover one clue at your location. Limit once per round. So who said he can't get clues? Who said that? You think I'm not going to defeat enemies? Oh, wait, I'm playing solo and I don't draw as many cards off the top of the deck? Uh-oh. I might not see enemies in a playthrough? Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so his Elder Sign effect when he draws that out of the Mythos bag. It's plus one for each clue on his location. And he's got nine health, five uh, sanity. And then he's got some deck building restrictions here. So you can start building decks right from the core set. If you're playing solo, like normally if I was playing solo, I, I, you know, I try out the starter deck once and then I dismantle it. And then I go grab the other player cards and start pulling out the guardian cards out of the other character starter decks and start doubling up on cards. Uh, Cause like almost every single card in Roland's deck is a one of which is like a little frustrating sometimes when you really want to see a certain card so like a card like you know Roland wants some weapons for example so 45 automatic and machete are two single-handed weapons those would be nice to get at some point in the game hopefully earlier the better but since you only have one of each uh good luck good luck so for example he only has i don't know like four or five weapons in the deck He's got his roll-in special, which is a signature card. He always has to play with this. If you're playing with the corset version, obviously. There might be other versions of Investigators where you get different uh, signature cards. And he has a signature weakness. And weakness cards are bad cards that are in your deck. Uh, when you reveal them, you have to kind of follow the instructions on them. Uh, which we'll do if that shows up. Which basically, this one is, uh, you're going to put three clues on it. Every time you discover a clue, you get to take a clue off. If there's any clues left on this at the end of the scenario, uh, you have to suffer a mental trauma, which is like you taking a kind of a sanity to start at the beginning of every scenario. So you kind of start at four sanity after it happens once. Hopefully it doesn't happen more than once uh, or, you know, more than zero. And then there's a random basic weakness. This is the starter one that just was stuck in the starter deck uh, out of the box. So I'm just going to use that one, which is an enemy, which is kind of good for what he's trying to do because he is a guardian. Guardians are focused on like killing enemies. That's their kind of main thing in this game. Uh, so yeah, so we might see that pop up. Uh, but weapons, uh, we got a couple knives. Yeah, so out of the starter deck, so these, you know, a guardian needs to fight enemies. They, they kind of need weapons, right? You, you need weapons. They have to be more efficient with damage dealing and uh, their fight stat. And I'm dealing with, um, yeah, only, only five weapons. Is that right? Is that right? Holy geez. Okay. Yeah. So 30 card deck plus uh, some signature cards, I think actually to get over the 30, um, but maybe not. Yeah, I think they do. I think the roll in special and the two weaknesses, uh, it says they do not count towards deck size. So I'm pretty sure it's 30 cards in these on top. So that just like the odds of seeing a weapon kind of is low with the starter deck. So I don't know if these starter decks are built kind of good for solo. Probably not. Uh, you probably, if you're only playing this game solo, you get the revised core set, you know, start tweaking, start playing, you know, try the, try the starter deck out to learn the game. Uh, but you might want to start putting in some extra weapons, for example, or ways to find weapons. I think there's one like card draw card in here that I saw. Yeah, this one, Old Book of Lore. Kind of expensive, but three, you put it in play, exhaust Old Book of Lore, choose and investigate your location. That investigator searches the top three cards of his or her deck for a card, draws it, shuffles the remaining cards into his or her deck. So that's like kind of the only way to kind of look for weapons if you're running low. Also, since you're fighting a lot and dealing with enemies, you might want to find some allies to soak up uh, some damage and sanity when you're, you know, not able to finish a monster right away. So there's quite a few allies in the deck, actually. You know, we got Guard Dog, we got Beat Cop. These will help us damage enemies, but also soak up some damage and horror that our investigator won't have to take. Um, there's ways to heal. We got First Aid. 
you know, if you want to see the list of these cards, uh, there is a deck list online. We'll go through that. But um, yeah, it's just like a, you know, a tasting of all the different kind of core set cards, like one of each for all the Guardian cards. And since he can have level zero, he can have uh, every investigator has special deck building rules on the back. But this guy can have Guardian cards level zero to five, Seeker cards, which are the yellow ones, level zero to two only. We can splash in some Seeker, and then he's got neutral cards, level 0 to 5 he can have. There's a little story on the back there. Um, but yeah, so they gave him a whole bunch of Seeker cards. So he can grab some clues and things. He has things to help him out with clue gathering, because uh, that's what the Seeker class is kind of known for. Uh, and then a bunch of neutral cards. But the neutral cards, they give you some duplicates. So you have Flashlight to help you get some clues. So basically in this game, you got to deal with enemies and gather clues. That's, that's the main... You know, oversimplification of the game, that's what you're doing. Keep the enemies controlled, either by fighting them or evading them or whatever. Um, and then, I guess three things. Staying alive. <laughs> Staying alive, gathering clues, and dealing with monsters. So, gathering clues, many ways to do that, but dealing with monsters, it's evading or fighting usually. Um, and then surviving. So, you know, trying to avoid the trouble or get through the scenario faster than it's trying to kill you. That kind of thing. Uh, so we got some emergency cash to get some resources. We got two manual dexterities to help us evade monsters pretty much or do agility tests. And then we got guts to try to help us uh, not lose our sanity since it, it's kind of focused on these uh, focus on the willpower in skill tests. And staying sane. Yes, 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 yes. Staying alive and staying sane. I grouped that together. But yeah, that is 100% correct, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, surviving is, is what I'll call it, surviving. Because if you're locked up in an insane asylum by the end of the scenario, you didn't really survive, in my opinion. That's not, it's not a true way to live. I don't think so. Um, Yogi's saying, to be honest, five is one too many. Now, Yogi, are you saying that thinking like you jam the deck full of other cards that search your deck and grab weapons out? Because I feel like in a deck that has no way to tutor... I feel like you need more than five, and these knives don't even like really count, okay? So really, we're trying to find one of three. One of three. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> uh, can you please hold up the new Roland art, please? I missed it. Oh, Kanji wasn't here for our unboxing, obviously, where we went through the art for like four hours. But you can definitely find it online. Uh, if you want to look closer, better, better quality of the art, they actually have it on fantasyflightgames.com. Go look at the uh, one in the news section you can find uh, for the re revised core set. Um, I think it's in here. If you want to see all the different art, it is somewhere in here. A revision to horror. If you Google that. If you Google a revision to horror. Uh, you can see some of the new art, but you'll see, I think, yeah, here's all the new investigator art. So there you go. All of it in one shot like that. So just look up the revision to horror is the article. And they did a, a recent article actually on, uh, learning about Daisy. So if you want to learn all about Daisy, they did a nice little article here. She's coming out in some new story, some new novel or something about her, you know, then they talk about her cards and how to play her, I guess. So they're, they're definitely going to be promoting this core set and their other Arkham stuff uh, through the next week, weeks and months uh, on the channel, which is kind of cool, or on their uh, website, which is kind of cool. And yeah, I don't know which light. <coughs> Damn sleeves, look at this glare. Um, yeah, I'll try to fix that in a sec. That's the thing, Yogi, shuffling these kind of one-of decks, I find these with like starter decks in games that have one of everything. It's like you kind of, like the, the mulligan rules aren't, aren't really like built for that. And uh, you know, whether you see a couple cards in this deck can make the scenario really easy or, or can make the scenario really hard. And, and it also depends on what comes off the encounter deck too, right? So this is the deck we're playing with. Um, I should have linked it down below, but I can put it in the chat. I think I have it here. Uh, where's my deck? Wait, where is it? 
Let me see if I can share it. So if you're watching this later, just open the chat archive. Uh, and you, if you want to bring up the uh, deck on the web and you can look at cards more closely. And as you're playing along, you guys can look for cards and help with the mulligan and that kind of stuff. Um, and understand what we're trying to draw for. I will put it. Did that go? Yeah, I just put a link to it in the chat. So if you guys want to see uh, what's actually included in the roll in starter deck, uh, I linked it to an Arkham DB website, which is a great website resource for building, modifying decks, playing through campaigns, that kind of stuff, um, which is pretty cool. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hey, Brian. Brian V, welcome. Love the daytime streams. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess we can stop blabbing on about the deck. We'll just play with the deck. That's probably a better way to do it. But if you have the core set, the new revised core set, uh, you go to the back of the learn to play guide. And here it has all the starter decks listed with a nice write-up for their strategy. So if we read the one for Roland... It said, Roland is a capable fighter and clue gatherer. Since his ability allows him to automatically discover clues by defeating enemies, you will want to hunt down any easy to kill enemies you can find, especially if they're in a location with a high shroud value. Try to get a weapon out as soon as possible, such as the 45 automatic, the machete, or Roland's 38 special. Yeah, I should have read this before. Uh, so that you are prepared to tackle any enemies that appear. Beat Cop, Guard Dog, and Physical Training can all help take down enemies as well. If you are still having trouble investigating, you may wish to carry a magnifying glass or have Dr. Milan Christopher help you. Evidence and working a hunch can also allow you to discover clues automatically in locations with a high shroud value. While Roland is physically tough, he has a low sanity and is especially susceptible to horror. Allies like Beat Cop or Dr. Milan Christopher can help soak some of the horror if you uncover something terrifying. Otherwise, don't be afraid to play first aid and use an entire turn healing horror if you were close to being defeated. You want to avoid mental trauma at all costs. Should you be compelled to cover up any strange events happening in your vicinity, don't forget you can use card effects such as Roland's ability, evidence, or working a hunch to remove these clues instead of investigating. Yeah, when you discover one or more clues at your location, discard that many clues from cover-up instead. Yeah, so annoying. So annoying. Um, but yeah, hopefully we don't see that too often. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there's a little write-up about the starter decks. Uh, investigating events occurring through... Investigating the events occurring throughout Arkham is dangerous work, and you will confront monstrosities far beyond your keen or Ken, and the knowledge you seek may cause irreparable harm to your psyche. You will need strong allies, useful skills, and the best tools if you succeed at the campaigns to come. To help you in your investigations, we have provided a sample starter deck for each of the five investigators in the core set. These decks are a gateway into the world of Arkham Horror and are ideal for players who wish to get into the action as fast as possible. Much appreciated. Uh, or for the players who do not wish to use the deck customization rules to construct an original deck. Each of the following, uh, or sorry, each of the provided decks is accompanied by tips and tricks for playing that deck, explaining how to make the best use of an investigator's ability or demonstrating card synergy within the deck. These starter decks are meant to be used at the beginning of a campaign and thus have zero experience points spent. The number in parentheses next to each card is its card collector number. If a card does not specify a number of copies you to use, Use only one copy of that card. Each of these uh, starter decks includes a specific basic weakness instead of a random basic weakness. Do not add another random basic weakness to the deck. With the contents of the core set, players can have all five of these starter decks constructed at the same time, which is so cool. It's cool for just like teaching players. Like I kind of want to keep this set together just so I can use it to like show new players. Like bring it to, you know, family functions and be like, all right, we're playing some Arkham Horror. Let's go. I don't know if that'll happen, but... Definitely some players I'm going to teach this game with this thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's all in here. So I, I much appreciate that. I like that. Definitely gives that feel of those Investigator Starter Deck packs, uh, which are also a good way, you know, to expand your player card collection and get, you know, teach new players and that kind of stuff. So I originally bought, I, ha I have two sets 
of those investigator starter decks because I wasn't 100 percent sure that this was gonna happen. Uh, so now I have like, you know, I can now have options for new players to pick from 10 different investigators with pre-built starter decks ready to go, um, which is kind of cool. So I'll have my own little like, you know, spreading spreading the game, building the player base kind of uh, little little kit ready to go. Uh, no built-in horror heal that I'm aware of. Uh, first aid, no? I think first aid you can do one or the other, no? Or am I wrong? I don't know. I, I haven't played with all these cards before, so... Um, yeah, yeah. If first aid has no supplies, discard it. Spend one supply, heal one damage or horror from an investigator at your location. Why, why do you guys think he can't? Is he not allowed to do that with first aid? Oh, okay, okay, it does work, okay. <laughs> and like, see a couple of people talk about how's he healing horror, why are they talking about that? But it's like, I don't know. It's got first aid, I, that's all I know of. I don't think there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else, but we'll check uh, quickly here. Uh, I don't see anything. Yeah, it's just the first aid that they mentioned. That's it. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, you don't like it? it, it talk about the, the creepy trench coat version of Roland, uh, the previous one. You don't like this one as much? You don't like uh, young Eminem dressed up in a detective outfit here? Can use it, but it's his only card to heal horror in the basic. Oh, okay, 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 cool, cool. Thanks, Flip. Uh, excellent. I don't know. Let's shuffle this up. Good. Since I just sorted it out. I'm gonna try to do setup in the proper order according to like the rules reference. Um. I know no, most people don't follow like to the T or you know adapt to something over time, but we will try to do it in order. So I chose my investigator. That's step one. Investigator chosen. We're playing with Roland. We're only playing one player. You take damage, trauma, trauma damage, and horror only in campaign play. We haven't got that far. We are playing the campaign. Uh, we are going to be playing through Night of the Zealot. We are playing through Night of the Zealot campaign. Um. And we're going to choose one of them to be the lead investigator. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. It's going to be a tough choice. Uh, but we'll use our, our lead investigator token. And we'll, uh, we'll say Roland's the lead investigator, I think. I think. I'm not sure, though. I don't know. That might be a wrong decision. But we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, assemble and shuffle the investigator decks. Working on it. Uh, assemble the token pool. All done. Over here on the, on the left. Um, so we got our damage or... Doom, not threat, as I may accidentally call it, uh, and then uh, resources. And again, there's the uh, three and fives uh, for resources to help support four players out of the revised core set without adding too much more cardboard. And then we also have uh, threes for the Doom and the Clues in there, you can see, which is kind of cool. Hopefully we don't need to pull from those that often, but uh, they're there. <laughs> Uh, there is an alternate version of Roland, yes. Uh, it's included in this, like, hard-to-find novella. Uh, Fantasy Flight Games, when they used to print books and, and art books and comics and all these RPGs and stuff, uh, they used to print uh, these novellas, which are now, have gone to Arcanite Books or something. Arcanite is the new publisher behind that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's called The Dirge to Reason. 
is the novella for Roland, where you can get an alternate, uh, same investigator with alternate art, but has new starting cards uh, that you can play with, like uh, new signature cards or whatever. And I don't know if I've played with that on stream before, but maybe I have. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I know we did play, I think with like Jenny Barnes, we played the alternate version, I think. Uh, my wife did in one stream. Or in one campaign, I think, actually. So yeah. But we're just playing again. We're sticking to the revised core set. We're only playing with stuff from this box, pretty much. Uh, which I have here. We'll be pulling from it. You know, I put little foam in there and things. And I have my, I have my custom tokens available, which we'll switch to eventually. Um, but for now, we'll just play with the core set stuff. Um, if you're interested in getting like acrylic tokens to replace the cardboard ones and that kind of stuff, uh, check the video description. There's links to that stuff uh, that I use. All should be down there um, if, if you're curious. Hello, Cynthia. All right. Uh, so our deck is shuffled. Okay. Uh, what else we got to do? Got our token pool. Chaos bag. So I, I think I put them all in there already. So for setting up the campaign, there is specific chaos tokens you put in the bag based on which difficulty you're playing at. I'm, I'm going to do it on standard. I, I don't know. I'm just going to do it on standard, I think. Um, but again, if you're playing like you're learning this game for the first time, put it on easy or put it on standard if you're okay losing a few times to try to figure things out. Uh, you know, if you want some more replayability, you can jack it up the difficulty as you feel fit. Or uh, as you see fit, sorry. Um, but yeah, I'll, I think we're just standard here. I think is what I set up. So yeah, we have one plus one instead of two. We have two zeros instead of three. Oh no, wait. Oh, I messed up. Yeah, I messed up. I have one extra zero in there. So that shouldn't be in there. Good thing I double checked. Uh, we have minus one, minus one, another minus one somewhere. Yep. So three minus ones. Uh, then we are looking for two minus twos. Okay. And then we need a minus three and a minus four. And now we need two skulls, uh, one cultist, one tablet and the elder sign and the horrible auto fail token. The thing that makes people either quit the game and never play it again or go deep and into the game and keep going. That's, that's a single game mechanic in this game that uh, will stop this game from being played on every game table in the world. <laughs> it's not everyone's cup of tea, that's for sure. So that you put it in the Mythos bag, that's all prepared. And then what else we gotta do? Um, and that, that bag will change as you play through the campaign. That's kind of cool too. Uh, different things will change the contents of the bag as you go, which is kind of neat. So every time you play based on choices or things you've completed and that kind of stuff, um, yeah, it could be different each, each campaign, which is cool. So now we collect our starting resources. Uh, we get five to start. Okay, five resources to start. You guys can see that. Okay. And then, um, I guess I'm going to put these away. Then we draw our opening hands. We draw five cards. <laughs> uh, if I was trying to cheat that bag, uh, it would have, I would have done more to the bag than just putting an extra zero in there. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so we're drawing our hand whenever we see one of our weakness cards. Uh, you just put that to the side, draw a replacement. All right, so help me out here. What, what do you guys think? I, I see it. We already talked. We read the, the starter stuff. So keeping 45 automatic seems like a must because uh, I have no other weapons. And that costs four, which uses almost all of our resources. Uh, we see first aid already, but I don't, I, I kind of, the only thing in here that I, I wish I had was an ally. And we don't have any. So I, I don't know. Would you guys keep... Anything else, I might keep an emergency cash because that will help, you know, offset the cost of buying a very expensive gun. But then keeping that reduces the odds of seeing an ally. So that's what I'm thinking right here. But I mean, evidence is not bad to get clues going. 
And remember, these are one of, so it's like, you know, if you're playing a deck that had normally two first aids in it, you might be like, ah, I'll see it later. But because it's a one of, we may never see it. What do you guys think? I want to I hear suggestions. I want to hear what you would do. Uh, I, I gave my spiel, and I'm going to check the chat just to be curious. It's nice to see. Like, I want to work through this thought process. It definitely will help new players for sure. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not a, a huge expert or anything like that, I, I, you know. I still am wrapping my head around this game. So lots of recommendations of keeping the cash and the gun. Okay. Oh, wow. We're like all on the same page. Uh, keep gun and emergency cash. Gun, cash, and nothing. First aid is bad. Action economy and solo. Okay. Okay. And again, I've never played solo. This is, we're here playing solo for the first time, so this is going to be weird for me. I've only ever played this game two-player, and I've played a lot of hours two-player. Uh... You know, and I mean solo, like true solo. I've never played solo with two-handed or anything like that. I've never played solo, period. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, we got to draw replacements. Okay, so we set these all off to the side. And we're going to draw a manual dexterity. Uh, we got a research librarian. Okay, so we got an ally. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know about this one. I, I don't know about this one. <laughs> and a vicious blow. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. So we're going to take all the cards that we didn't keep and the weaknesses and we put them back into the deck. Pretty sure that's how it goes. First aid is a trap. Okay. Until I'm down to four sanity and I'm crying later without uh, any allies to help me and I wish I had the first aid. <laughs> uh... Dan says, this is going to go, uh, this is going to play out like real life. Without Mel, Rob will go insane for sure. 100%. 100%. Okay, uh, let's just try to shuffle our weaknesses to the bottom. That's what we hope. What we hope. Gotta try for your gun or flashlight. Yeah, flashlight would be cool. Flashlight would be a cool pull. This is only one-handed, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no two-handed weapons in his deck right now, right? Maybe later. Maybe later. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, now we gotta set up the scenario. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll read the scenario instructions. So... Uh, you bring up your, your little campaign guide. And, uh, yeah. So Friday, September 18th, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. It is the end of a long and abnormally hot summer. First hints of autumn beckon. But a heavy heat persists. Relentless. A silent, unspoken anger grips the town. Tempers are short. And in the last week alone, there have been numerous reports of townspeople coming to heated, violent blows with one another over simple misunderstandings. And now, a call for James Hankerson. Oh, and now a call from James Hankerson. He claims to have found a dismembered body in his barn. Blaming the weather would be too easy. There is something wrong uh, with this town, and not a whole lot uh, this old soothsayer can do to stop the slide. My auguries indicate a small group of investigators will soon take note of these strange happenings and set forth to make things right. I'll be watching their progress, but I won't be holding my breath. Uh, so we're playing the Night of the Zelda campaign, one to four players, yada, yada, yada. Uh, when playing the campaign, players advance from one scenario to the next in sequential order with the results of their performance and their decisions in each scenario carrying over uh, to influence the next. Additionally, the players advance through the story. They earn experience, my favorite part, uh, which they can use to purchase new cards or upgrade existing cards for their deck. And we'll do that at the end of the stream. So if you guys want to hang out afterwards, uh, when we're done this first scenario, assuming we get some experience, uh, we'll crack out all the, um, all the experience cards, and we'll look at the ones that Roland can use, and we'll, we'll pick some. We'll spend our experience uh, to prepare for tomorrow's stream. So uh, you guys can impact how we... Uh, how we change the deck. We'll look at what's what's included in the revised course. There's some different cards in there, I guess. Uh, I, did, I didn't look at the previous one to see what's different there, but we did have a list. Uh, I should have brought that up. Anyways, uh, we talked about it in the unboxing video. Uh, campaign setup. 
So we chose our investigator. Okay, it's just some of the same stuff. We did our difficulty. Okay, all that's done. Oh, the campaign log, uh, which we'll use the Arkham Cards app to do. So part one, the gathering. Uh, you and your partners have been investigating strange events taking place in your home city of Arkham, Massachusetts. Uh, over the past few weeks, several townspeople have mysteriously gone missing. Recently, their corpses turned up in the woods, savage and half-eaten. The police and newspapers have started that, or stated sorry, that wild animals are responsible, but you believe there is something else going on. You are gathered together at the lead investigator's home to discuss these bizarre events. Well, it's not much of a gathering. Roland's kind of just chilling in his own house, I guess. <laughs> uh, set up. Gather all the cards from the following counter sets. Well, it should have been done already because that's how they were in the starter set. Uh, or, or wrapped together in the box. I've sleeved them, though. Hopefully I didn't mess up uh, the order or anything. Okay, so we got the, the sets. Uh, they're all here. Uh, put the study into play. So we're going to put our, our scenario reference card. This will tell us what uh, certain tokens coming out of the Mythos bag will do. So a skull will be minus X. X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. The cultist is minus one if you fail to take a horror. And these affect your skill tests in the game. And then we have the tablet. Minus two if there is a ghoul enemy at your location. Take one damage. Blech. We gotta keep the ghoul enemies away from us. All right, we'll look at the uh, act and agenda. You just have to make sure the agenda is on the left uh, and it's in order. The order is on the top. So we have for this scenario, we have agenda one, two, and three. And B, there's stuff on the back of them. Do not look at that if you're playing and don't wanna be spoiled. Uh, and then we have the act deck, which is kind of like the good deck. So the agenda is like, you know, the bad thing that's advancing. Um, and getting worse. The act deck is like you trying to investigate and advance the story uh, the good way, I guess, or, or the, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's never always that, but. So the study, uh, you've been investigating the strange events occurring in Arkham for several days now. Your desk is covered in newspapers, articles, newspaper articles, police reports, and witness accounts. So this will be here, we'll put our hand over here. Uh, and then what, is, what are we doing with the rest? Set each other location aside out of play. Uh, so I'll just throw those up here somewhere. And set the ghoul priest and Lita Chandler aside out of play, which are here. So these will be set aside out of play. Hopefully you see them later. I'm, well, hopefully not, but hopefully, you know, those are gonna come into play. I'll throw those off there. Uh, shuffle the remainder of the encounter cards from the previously gathered encounter sets to form the encounter deck. And the rest we do not read because it's uh, spoiler stuff, it's, uh, you know, resolution, you don't want to know that stuff. And I find even if you haven't played the campaign, I've played this campaign a couple times before, but it was months and months ago, I, I don't remember. So we're gonna, we're gonna have fun, you know, playing along, um, and I'll forget things and, you know, those who have played this many, many times in the chat, I'm sure you're gonna be like, why is he doing that? What an idiot. Uh, it's because I don't remember. <laughs> I play many other games, not just this one. This isn't my primary game. This is a lifestyle game, but I play it definitely more casually uh, than it's definitely intended to be, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate the help as we go along, for sure. But uh, I do not have this scenario memorized, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, no. Massachusetts. I know, I'm so bad at saying that, I'm sorry. Massachusetts. 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 Uh, yeah, and, and I'm just playing, I see some talk about the sleeves. Uh, so I was at Gen Con 2019, I think, or maybe 2018, uh, a few years ago. And uh, there was a vendor there basically selling these clear, uh, these clear dragon shields, which, I mean, if you play in tournaments, uh, tournament card games, you're not allowed to use clear sleeves. It's like against tournament rules usually. Um, but... For Keyforge, I was playing that a lot at home and at casual tournaments um, where it didn't matter. And you kind of in Keyforge want to see the back of the deck anyway to make sure you're not swapping cards out because the decks are pre-constructed. Um, so those were on sale for like $5 a pack or something. So I just literally took the whole counter and just uh, slid it into my uh, bag and uh, bought them all. So I have like tons of these see-through ones. But also I play lots of board games. So uh, it works good when you're just playing at home. And these cooperative card games, like who cares? You're just playing at home, right? I'm not. I'm not taking this to any tournaments uh, or anything, so I don't care. Uh, so I don't mind buying clear, uh, see-through stuff. So these are Dragon Shield mats, but they're obviously the transparent versions. So just so you know. 
Uh, which, yeah, don't buy that if you're going to like a magic tournament or something trying to play. You'll, you'll get in trouble. You're not supposed to be able to see the back of the cards. Um, but yeah. And these are clear. They're clear matte. Same, same sleeves, just the clear version. Oh, you can use colored sleeves at tournaments. That's all good. You can use art sleeves, colored sleeves, whatever. They just have to be opaque. Like, you can't be able to see through them. Uh, so that nobody can see marked cards or anything like that. Also, if you're playtesting and, like, proxying and stuff like that, um, yeah, it, it, you also don't want to really be able to see through. <laughs> Rob 2021. I don't mind buying clear see-through stuff. Yes. Yes. I have a whole closet full of clear see-through stuff. That's a different YouTube channel, though. That's a different YouTube channel. <laughs> or I guess a different website altogether. I don't think that's a YouTube thing. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, shuffled up our encounter deck, I think, enough. I, I don't know. I'm a little worried, like... Because it was all sorted, right? I always get... You know, usually I hand it to Mel. After I shuffle it before the stream, I hand it to Mel to shuffle. You know, just in case. Because it would suck to literally draw, like, you know, the same cards back to back. And, you know, or too much of one encounter set. It's all clumped together. Yeah, that might might cause a, a real issue. <laughs> Rob after tech. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure Mel knows them now. She might might be watching. Um, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> okay. So we got our encounter deck shuffled up. What else do we need to do? What else do we need to do? I think that's it, right? Oh, yeah. We got to read. We got to read, read, read. Uh, what's going on? This is Agenda 1. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. It says... It is late at night. You are holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlor down the hall. At the same time, you hear the you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. Uh, which is probably this guy. Uh, okay. Uh, the act is telling us we're trapped. Oh, and uh, so there's a little number on the bottom. This is your doom threshold. So as we put little doom tokens uh, on this card, once it hits three we, in play, we have to advance the deck. Uh, and that means things are getting worse. Uh, and uh, unlike like Marvel Champions, other co-op LCGs, you can't really like, uh, I don't know, I don't forget Lord of the Rings, but uh, you can't really stop the advancing so much unless there's like doom on enemies in play and cards in play that you can like clear off. But usually when it's on the agenda, from my experience, it's like kind of like the clock's always ticking and you kind of can't really slow it down. Um, this says, as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid, a solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. We're trapped! Okay. So at the study, uh, the door to your study has vanished. So even shows in the art there. And then when we flip this over, we have a shroud value, which is a difficulty you're testing against to try to gain clues and investigate. And the clue tokens are on the other side of the doom. And we're going to spawn two clues per investigator. And we're only playing solo, which I might mess this up. Keep an eye on me. Because uh, that, to me, I always think it's, you know, two player, I think, times two, because I only ever play this game two player. So I might get messed up with that and, and forget that I'm, like, I'm only one investigator. So the number that's printed is the number I follow today. I got to try to do that. So uh, also here it is. Uh, so I only need two clues on this to advance it. As opposed to four if you're playing two player. Or six if you're playing three player. That kind of thing. Or three handed I guess. If you're running like three investigators. You know. Just because you're playing solo doesn't mean you have to play with just one investigator. You can you can do two or more if you're uh, crazy. Like some people in the chat I'm sure are crazies. <clears throat> Anyways. Uh... <laughs> Oh, Mel is here half listening. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, Brian. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, I have a reference sheet little thing. So the game comes with these reference cards. If you're new, put them beside you. Use them. I still keep them by. 
uh, usually when we play, just because we play other games, and especially other Arkham-themed games, uh, you know, they have different rules for actions, and how many actions, and the round structure, and all that stuff. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't feel embarrassed to be like, you know, I'm pretty sure I know all the actions in the game or anything, but it's all here, just in case you need. Uh, but it's the flow of the game, because uh, sometimes I accidentally, you know, skip a step. Uh, but it's all here. So we're going to skip the Mythos phase on the first round, but that's advancing the agenda, basically, and drawing amazing cards off the encounter deck. Uh, but we're going to go right into the investigation phase, where each investigator takes a turn performing three actions. They can be the same action three times, whatever, any order you want. They're all here. You can draw a card or gain a resource. That's an action. Play an event or asset card from your hand. You can activate the little arrow ability on a card. You can spend an action to move. Uh, you can spend an action to investigate. You can spend an action to fight or engage an enemy. You, uh, you can attempt to evade an enemy. And then it tells you the little squiggly line or the swirly arrow. Don't, those don't cost actions to activate. And if you're engaged with an enemy, important, you can't uh, do anything other than fight, evade, parlay, or resign. Otherwise, the enemy tries to eat you. Uh, so yeah, so we're just gonna go with the flow. I mean, we can keep that right there. So yeah, uh, so we're starting with the investigation phase. We've got our, our hand of five cards. Uh, at this point, uh, sometimes you draw a bunch of garbage and you're like, uh-oh, you can spend an action to draw a card right now if you wanted. Or if you need a little more money to play some stuff from your hand, you could spend an action to gain some money. I don't think we need to do those right now. I feel like we have stuff to play. But I mean, yeah, I think we should be okay because I can play emergency cash. Uh, this is my thought. This is my thought process. Play emergency cash. We'll gain three more resources to our resource pool. We can play the gun. Uh, that takes away four. And then maybe we can slap down the research librarian, which I mean is not the best ally. It can only take one damage or one horror. Uh, but when it enters play, it's got a little reaction there. Search your deck for a tome asset, which I think this deck has two or three of them. And add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. And we can go pick something. I don't know. It's just some more card draw. I, I, I don't know. Probably nothing that great. We'll probably just end up using it as a skill card or discarding it. Uh, we're playing on standard. I, I don't know. I just said standard. So, I mean, if we lose horribly, you know, we get our butts kicked. It's all good. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. You know. That'll, that'll just, like, leave it so there's other stuff for you to discover when you play it uh, on your own for those watching. Uh, but I'm just going to play on standard. Uh, okay. The librarian's good monster food? Excellent. Okay, uh, so that's what we'll do. So we'll do emergency cash. We'll gain three more resources. Okay. And then, uh, we're gonna play the gun. Spend four. And then we're gonna put some, uh, ammo tokens, which are also known as resource tokens on it. And... So that's two actions. So emergency cash was one. 45 automatic playing an asset was two. And then three, we're going to play the research librarian. And we're going to spend two resources, leaving two left. And when it comes into play, we're going to search our deck for a tome asset and add it to our hand. Let's find our tome assets and talk about them. There's a tome. Maybe it's only one. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about these. I, I don't know which one's better to grab. I mean, they both only have one skill icon on the left side. So I start looking there to see if they're, you know, good skill card fodder or whatever. Um, but, I mean, one has the mind or willpower icon or whatever, and the one has the fight. So it's like... But uh, they're both single-handed. We can equip them. Uh, the medical text says, choose an investigator at your location and test intellect for two. Our default intellect is three for now until we find some other cards to help us. Uh, if you succeed, heal one damage from that investigator. If you fail, deal one damage to that investigator. So there's some heal in the medical text. Or again, the Book of Lore we looked at earlier, it's a way to uh, basically draw, or look at three cards on your deck, draw one, put the other two, or shuffle the other two back in. So it's a way to dig for cards. Costs three to play though. Uh, but any suggestions? What, what would you guys grab to hand? Part of me just wants to grab the willpower, the old book of lore, just to have a willpower icon in hand so we take less trauma off the encounter deck uh, if we have to do that test. Because I don't know if I'd play either of these uh, for what they do, but uh, I mean, if we're thinking about fighting monsters, but we don't know what we'll see off the deck. So we might not see monsters for a while, we might see a ton of them. 
We might not see any tests to test willpower. Adam says, Book of Lore is my choice. Hey, Mel, how's it going? Uh, it's good to see this from the start. It interests me, but don't know if I'd enjoy playing. That's why I'm here. I'm here playing from a newbie perspective, showing off just the revised core set, basics of play, uh, and all this stuff holds up throughout the many hundreds of hours I feel like we've spent focus on this game over the year or whatever. Um, yeah, you still get a good feeling. Like, you know, it's not like the campaigns later uh, break from these, the, the same flow of the game or anything. It's still, you're still playing the same game. Um, so this is like a good, good taste of it. All right. Uh, yeah, so I'll go with the Book of Lore just for like the effect I like better, I think, and the willpower. I see that's what some people are recommending. So we're going to go with that one. Either way, it's just another card in hand. So if we have to discard a card for something too, that would probably be the one. Uh, and then we'll shuffle the deck. Yeah, and Yogi's saying, since the starter deck is not consistent, the old Book of Lore action has some value. It's just spending three on that and an action to find a card means the card we find probably won't have the money to play it. <laughs> that's, that's the way I look at it. Unless we're finding emergency cash to help us play with other cards in our hand, but again, you're only looking at the top three, so... Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> you're kind of just like, oh, let's see what we got. And let's pick the not worst card. Or the not... The, the, the least bad card. Okay. Uh, okay. So that was our first turn. Uh, enemy phase. There's no enemies. We got nothing to do with the enemies. Upkeep phase. Uh, oh yeah, so we're done. We flip our card, but whatever. And then we'll uh, reset back. We ready up any cards that were exhausted. There are none that are exhausted. Uh, each investigator draws a card. Oh, we got a Kniffy. And uh, you gain a resource. Now we're up to three resources. Okay, and then uh, we check our hand size. Uh, we definitely don't have eight cards. If we had more than eight cards, you have to discard down to eight. So we can't just hoard stuff in our hand too much. Um, and then we go around to the Mythos phase, which we've not done yet, which is normally the first phase of the round. So we place one Doom on the agenda. Now we're at one out of three. Then we're gonna draw, and we would advance it if there was Three or more Doom in play at this point. We clear all the Doom away in advance. You'll see that in the future, obviously. What do we get off the encounter deck? So each investigator draws one of these amazing cards. We got Grasping Hands, which is a hazard. Revelation Test Agility. For each point you fail by, take a damage. Okay. <laughs> well, we got Manual Dexterity in hand, which could add two to our agility test. The only problem is our agility sucks. It's only two. It's only two. Hmm. And that's the only agility icons we have in hand. And this has the beautiful little line on the card that says, if this test is successful, draw a card. Too easy. Uh, but putting this into a test where you're like, you know, you kind of want to be two or higher on tests to kind of like have really good odds of winning them. Um, I mean, but this would only be a plus one. So I feel like it's not really worth it. But the fact that this test does a point of damage for every point we fail by... It's not so clear like most tests are just fail, something bad, pass, nothing bad, hopefully. Um, but this is like damage points, which could be the difference between surviving an additional round later or not. So we're playing on standard difficulty. Should I not be? Uh, that's like the third person that's been like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just playing on standard. I've never played solo, so I don't know if like... There's an understanding in solo to play like on a lower difficulty with the balance of the game. I know in like Mansion of the Madness and Arkham Horror the Board Game and Elder Chore, there's all these house rules because the game isn't really scaled well for difficulty. Is there an issue with solo with this game? Should I be doing that? Or oh, you guys are asking too for the the how high you should go above a test, right? Uh, because if I think you guys, that's what you guys are asking too, right? Uh, cause if we're playing easy, we have some extra plus ones, but look, we don't have a minus three or minus four. So then we don't have to worry too much about it, you know, failing a test other than the horrible auto fail token. So I think that's what we're asking about, right? St oh, standard is fine. Okay. And Ernie says, I think you want a plus two on your test result. You should not play on standard with only the starter deck. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, that that makes sense. I wasn't thinking of that too, but yeah, we're playing with a pretty not great deck. But all right, uh, okay, let's do a little a little change up here. Um, and while we're doing that, actually, that's a, a good point. Uh, I remember drawing these plain tokens. Kind of sucks out of the bag, um, and it's like a night or day difference. Uh, investing in some coin capsules. Don't ask me which ones, because it depends on where you live and where you're ordering them from. Uh, but there's certain coin capsules, a couple different sizes that work. Uh, and you just basically wrap your tokens in these little coin capsules. And it makes it much nicer when you're shuffling them in the Mythos bag and drawing them. And it protects them from wearing out and that kind of thing. Um, highly recommended. Or uh, I like to play now with just acrylic tokens. So they're not as bulky, but they are plastic. You know, they shouldn't wear off. The art should always be good. Uh, and these are from E-Raptor. They're linked down below. But you can find lots of vendors. Uh, that make these acrylic tokens or custom custom made tokens or 3d print your own I think you can probably do now um, But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna swap them out. I think I'm gonna swap them out. Yeah, we can play through on easy Probably better to show more of the game too, right? Uh, but we'll still play with the regular tokens. We'll play with the regular tokens because they are you know the same as in the other set So let's uh, try to find them all in here Where is the auto fail? Did I seriously not have it here? I see it here, but why is it not in a coin capsule? I must have removed some. Hmm. Hmm. I might have removed some, but I, I have other ones I have spare. But anyways, okay, let's not play with these then because I don't have my extra bag of coin capsules here right with me. They're upstairs. But yeah, anyways, it's a good point. I just want to show off the coin capsules because, uh, you know, it's something you might want to invest in. After playing with the regular cardboard once, uh, I already like switched. I was just like, yep. Yep, yep, yep. It just needs to be. So yeah, I must have removed some uh, to use with another, another Arkham game. Uh, but yeah. Alright, so we need... We're playing on easy. We need those two. Uh, we need a tablet. We need a cultist. Uh, we need two skulls. Two skulls. And we need two minus twos. And we need three minus ones. And we need three zeros. Yeah, maybe the game will be more gentle if we don't see what we need. Um, <laughs> it's just bad draws. <laughs> okay, so we did. It. We set up the easy. And Yogi says, if you play on easy, I'm not going to offer any advice. Okay, that works. <laughs> ah, that's what I have to do to keep Yogi quiet. All right, that's that's uh, noted. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. We could switch it to standard for like uh, tomorrow, right? Like mid mid campaign, and just play the first one on easy. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> nice. Using using your favorite card sleeve, sweet. Okay. Uh, so this is our mythos bag. All right, got them all out of there. Okay, uh, so yeah, we're doing a test. I'm gonna throw the manual dexterity in there uh, Just because I don't want to take a ton of damage Preferably no damage and if we succeed I feel a little the elder sign is in here it should be in here Let's double check Did I not put it in there? Oh my god, I don't think I did Wow Did I not put both of them like side by side? Or was I confused because I switched mid? Oh yeah, it didn't make it in. Wow. I was trying to play on hard mode. I see. Like, like... No, you always have that in there, even on the hardest. 
<laughs> what was I doing? Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to throw the manual dexterity in. Yes, they did make Lita easy to find. She's actually packaged with the scenario in separate shrink wrap or whatever uh, compared to the other scenarios. They're like all individually wrapped. You can check out the unboxing video that's linked down in the playlist section uh, if you're curious to see how this core set comes from unboxing and we go through it all. What the differences are, the art differences, the card differences. Uh, I went through all that stuff in another stream. Okay. Uh, are there two tablets in easy? Oh, that's what I messed up. Ah, that's what I messed up. I probably grabbed a tablet... Or I'm, yeah, see? Or I just did it on the, the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, I'm, let me double check. Wow, 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 wow. I am a mess. I am a mess. Okay, let's double check. <laughs> let's only look at one line so I don't get confused. Uh, okay, tablet. So to these two, autofail and elder sign. And then the two skulls, cultist. Okay. Uh, two minus twos, okay, three minus ones, okay, three zeros, and two plus ones. I feel confident now. I feel confident now. I'm so sorry, guys. I definitely was all over the place there. I think I was thrown off because I thought I had the coin capsule stuff, and yeah, definitely messed up. Oh my god, I just put them back in the bag. Uh, all right, we're gonna start the stream over because I'm a mess. I haven't had more than a coffee yet. I need to have more. Minus ones, auto fails, another oh, zeros, zeros, two minus twos. Is that all of it? Okay, last time. Okay, I'm putting this away. Two plus ones. Three zeros. Uh, three minus ones. Two minus twos. Two skulls. One cultist. One tablet. And the auto fail and the elder sign. Okay. Slowly. I will pick them up. And then I'll find my mythos bag, which is hidden. And actually put it in the mythos bag. <laughs> Woo! All right, we got there. We got there. Unless somebody tells me I missed up, missed something else. No, no, I have. I know. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just joking. I'm fine. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> Steph, exactly. Without Mel helping, I, I'm I'm lost. She's like the one that always builds the Mythos bag too. So now I can't blame it on her when it's when it's wrong. Damn it! Oh, I missed the Patreon too. Oh man. Oh man. Let me check. Let's see in the chat though. Oh, yeah, weird. Joshua Lester, thank you so much for becoming a producer and supporting us on Patreon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Okay. Thank you for the support. I need it. <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, manual dexterity. So our test is uh, two agility on our hero card, plus the two on the side of the card. So we're at four. And the test is a three. So it tells us right here, we're testing agility, looking for three. And for each point we fail by, take a damage. Okay? So now, we know we have four against three. We're up by one. Now we're going to shake up the mythos bag. And we're going to draw a token that's going to modify the result. And hopefully, 
you saw there's a bunch of negative results because remember uh, all those skulls and cultists and tablets, they're all like negative numbers usually. That first one isn't negative yet because there's no ghouls, but the other ones are, are negative. So you have a bunch going against you, you have a bunch going for you. The harder difficulty you play on, the more worse tokens there are, the more extreme uh, it goes. And also, yeah, based on some choices you make in a scenario or how bad you do, it might just get worse. Here we go. We got a skull. And that one's the one that's minus X. X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. <gasps> we have no ghouls yet. So I'll throw that back in the Mythos bag. And we're good. So we were up one. We're successful. So manual dexterity. Uh, we're successful says you get to draw a card. Which is amazing. Until you draw this card. Uh, mind over matter. Fast. Play during your turn. So me because it's fast means it doesn't cost an action to play. Uh, until the end of the round, you may use your intellect in place of your fight and agility. Hmm. I don't know. Why is that in this deck? I mean, I guess for agility tests, maybe that's a good thing. Because intellect is three. And there are some cards in this deck that buff up your intellect. But man, to replace fight for rolling, you never want to do that, right? What am I doing? Wrong discard. Okay. So we got a card out of it. All right, now that's the Mythos phase. That's, that's the Mythos phase. It took 65 minutes, but uh, that's the Mythos phase. And now we're going to the Investigator phase again. And it just goes around and around like that. So we're on to round... Uh, well, we're already doing round two. So now what three actions should we do here? We want clues. That's the only way we're going to be able to advance. Otherwise, we're just sitting here at our study uh, looking like idiots. So... Um, or do we like play the book of lore and like try to dig for another card or like there's no monster to fight and that's like easy way to get clues. We could just investigate, but uh, I don't have any investigation icons on cards in my hand. I have no clue gathering tricks. So I'm literally would be doing uh, three on two. So three intellect on two shroud uh, tests looking for clues. That doesn't seem fun to me. But again, we're playing on easy now, so maybe it's not so bad to be up one. And we should just do it that way instead of trying to be cute and digging for cards. Like, because there's like an ally that gives us plus one intellect. There's a magnifying glass in the deck that gives a plus one intellect. There's cards that have intellect icons on them to help us. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll just try to get the clues classic style, I guess. And maybe an enemy spawns on our head next turn, but like, I don't know. Or do we just draw? Do we draw and maybe, maybe we draw into something that helps us? Hmm. Hmm. So I'll be super sad if I play this book of lore. I draw, look at the top three cards. I find magnifying glass, which I'd much rather have had in my other hand slot. And uh, then I just throw that into play. That seems dumb, right? <laughs> that seems dumb. Uh... Oh, boy. All right, one sec. Uh... All right, perfect. Okay. Um... Yeah, so I'll probably just draw first. We got hyper awareness. Ah, see, here's something that can help us on lore tests and agility tests. I might just throw this in play and then just do like, uh, try to get one clue. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna play hyper awareness. I don't know how much money we'll have to do this kind of stuff, but. I'd rather play that. It doesn't take up any kind of like hand slots or amulet slots or anything. I don't know. Yeah. I'll play it. I'll play it. Okay, so got hyper awareness in play. We're gonna do the, uh, we'll just do a lore test. I'm not gonna spend any money on the lore test though. Uh, or the, uh, sorry. Intellect, intellect test, sorry, intellect test. Uh, to do an investigate. We're gonna take an investigate action. So we are three investigate on two shroud. Let's see what we get. Oh, we got a plus one. Got a plus one. Okay. So 
So we definitely succeeded. That gets us a clue off our location. And that's it. Monster phase, no monsters. We're going to reset. We would flip our card back, whatever. Uh, we're going to draw a card. Physical training. Okay, the other one to help us throw money at our problems. Help us with fight tests or uh, will tests. Will power tests. And then we gain a resource. And then we are going to wrap around to the mythos phase. We only have five cards in hand, so we're definitely under our limit. We're going to throw a doom on here. And then we draw an encounter card. Oh, here's an enemy. But we spawn it at the attic. This means it doesn't get spawned at all, right? Because there's no spawn place for it. If I remember correctly, it's been a long time since that's happened. Right? I think it just like uh, fizzles. And correct me if I'm wrong. Is that is that correct? It just fizzles. Do I draw a replacement? I don't think I don't think so. But it's been a while since that situation's come up. Let's see. Let's see if we can find out. Oh, David, thank you. David says it's discarded. Yes, no replacement needed. And I'm just like for fun looking up here, spawning an enemy in our rules pop. This is linked down in the video description for those that join late. Uh, I don't know if it has it on here. Hmm. It's FAQ thing. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> No, Eddie, it's from playing so much Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, Elder Sign, I think. What else? What else has that? Does the Mansion of Madness have lore also? This is like the only game that doesn't have the book for lore. It's like intellect. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird that they changed that, but... Uh, so yeah, that's why I'll be saying that sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Jen, we're just looking up. I drew into uh, a Flesh Eater that wanted to spawn at the attic, uh, but there is no attic right now. So I, I remember this happening when we were first learning the game and I think it just gets discarded. David says so, and we don't draw our placement. So I kind of wanted an enemy actually, uh, so we could fight it, just get the clue, you know, as part of his ability, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait. Okay, so back around to our turn. Uh, I'll just do a test to try to uh, investigate again. Skull. No ghoul enemies, so that's a minus zero. We got it. Uh, and then we're going to do the normally free action of spending two clues to advance the act deck. And then we read the back. So we got uh, the door on the floor. Okay, we're going to read a little story here. You notice uh, that the edges of the newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see a door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob, and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, uh, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. So it tells us some game stuff down here that's not in italics. We're going to put into play the set-aside hallway, cellar, attic, and parlor. And then we're going to discard each enemy in the study. Place each investigator in the hallway, remove the study from the game. Okay, so let's grab the other locations. Uh, the study's going to be gone. And the hallway, parlor, the attic, and the cellar. Assuming that's a good way to put them. Uh, and locations, now that we have more than one... Uh, locations have a little symbol on the top, but to know where location connects to, look at the bottom and the symbols will match other locations. So we know that the hallway is a way to get to the blue triangle, which is also the, the symbol for the attic in the top left there. So that lets you know they're connected. Uh, and the only real negative so far from the revised core set, something I can still bitch and complain about is why there's no arrow tokens, because a lot of people play with these things. A lot of people make them or sell them, uh, but we got some off Etsy and we also made some with like little craft popsicle sticks. Thanks to Mel for painting them and stuff. I don't have those ones nearby, uh, but I do have these ones we got off Etsy, uh, but these just help you keep it easy to follow. It doesn't matter so much in this first scenario, but you'll notice in tomorrow in the second scenario, it gets a little crazy right away. 
Um, but you could use these little arrows, and some people use like a white sheet of paper underneath and draw, uh, but that doesn't look that good. So <laughs> aesthetically not pleasing. Uh, so what we could do is uh, we see that the hallway connects to the attic. So these don't come with the game. These are an extra accessory. I wish they just included some cardboard ones, a sheet of them in the game. I don't know why they didn't do that for the revised core set. Um, yeah, it's just weird. I, I don't know why they did that, but uh, it would have been an easy include, I think. Uh, so the hallway also connects to the parlor. And there's something special about the parlor, it looks like. And then this connects to the cellar. Uh, all of them, the cellar, the parlor, and the attic all connect back to the hallway, but don't connect to each other. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but sometimes moving around in this game can get a little confusing. What connects to what? So hopefully this helps. I don't know. Uh, so the hallway says, uh, a moment of panic and disorientation strikes you, uh, strikes, sorry, as you land upon the floor in the hallway. The world spins as if turned on its head. Uh, so that's messed up. Okay, and we're going to start here, so we actually flip it over. Uh, it's got one shroud, but the spawns no clues. Uh, the walls of your house are splattered with mud, and your hardwood floor is gone, replaced with a dirt path. So, things are getting crazy. Uh, so the parlor, which, based on our unboxing, this is one of the ones we noticed had different art. So they're trying to let you know, don't just move here. There is game text on it, though. Uh, the entrance to the parlor is blocked by a darkly glowing, unfathomable barrier. You cannot move into the parlor. It also says, you're unsure what would happen if you tried to cross the threshold of the strange barrier, but based on its extreme heat, you sure as hell don't want to try. <laughs> so, uh, we, discard we discarded, we had no enemies in the study to discard. We started the hallway, removed the study, and then uh, we advance to act 2A, which is the barrier. So a glowing barrier blocks your path uh, to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier to watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there is something in the cellar or attic that can help. And now we have an objective. So we can't just normally do the same free action uh, to get rid of the uh, act to advance it. So we need three clues per investigator, but it says objective when the round ends. Investigators in the hallway, as a group, can spend the requisite number of clues to advance. So we can't just advance like we did just, you know, any time on our turn. Now we have to wait till the end of the round. We have to have three clues, and we have to be in the hallway. Yeah. All right. So we only did one action, right? We just uh, got the clue. That, the investigate. That was it on this round. So we have two more actions still. Is there a direction? Should we go to the cellar? It says, uh, the stairs leading down to the cellar are slick, and they glisten with a thin layer of ice. So I assume we slip on those. Uh, and then we have the attic. A smell of rotten meat assaults your nostrils as you approach the attic stairs. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. Should we go upstairs or downstairs? Any recommendations? Any recommendations? Here, we can do a quick poll. We can do a quick poll. <laughs> Where to go? Up or down? <laughs> or stay where we are, I don't know. <laughs> I just put a poll in the live chat, you guys can vote, I'll leave it up for a minute. Uh, you guys can impact which way we go. Oh man. Run or run into the parlor barrier and cook cook myself? I, I don't think we're allowed. I don't think I'm allowed. It says you cannot move into the parlor. And the rules text says cannot, you know, that's that overrides everything, so I'm not even allowed to try. Nothing <laughs> Christy Jan says, nothing good ever happened in the cellar. I hate the snare so much because of the gimmick of upstairs or downstairs. <laughs> And then Quip says, hello, hello, how have you been, Rob? We're, I've been okay so far. Uh, a little thrown off by trying to put together a Mythos bag live on stream. But other than that, everything's okay. How are you? How are you, Quip? Good to see you again. Uh, 
Second action, move. Third action, investigate. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen when we flip the cards. I don't remember, but... It's a tutorial scenario, so I'm not too scared, but... All right, so let's close the poll. Let's see where you guys want me to go. And... See the results in this in the stream. Yeah, flip. I was talking about the return to stuff before. I'm gonna try to play that next week. Actually, uh, I I have a, a full Roland solo deck uh, that I can put together uh, using like the whole card pool. And we're gonna play next week. I'll throw the return to in, and we're gonna play the scenario with the return to box, which uh, I, I'm looking forward to. I've never never played it. So part of playing this now is me to experience the Night of the Zealot campaign. One more time to kind of refresh my memory. And then I want to try the Return to Zealot, Return to Night of the Zealot live on stream next week. And you guys can play along with me on that one. And uh, I'll play it blind. And uh, yeah, it will not go as easy as this, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, though. I'm looking forward to trying it. And we'll see. We'll take a look at what's included in it and how it changes it. It'll, it'll be neat. I, I'm just curious to experience that product. Okay, so we're going up 63%. Okay, we're going to the attic. So move is our second action. When you enter the location, we'll flip it over. And I love the way the art changes. So now we're in the attic. Uh, so it's got one shroud, nice and easy to get clues off of. And it's going to spawn two clues on it per investigator. Obviously only one investigator. Forced. After you enter the attic, take one horror. The, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because the smell of the meat, it's messing with my head. And it says the bloody carcass of a malformed beast swings from a meat hook chained to the ceiling. Blood drains slowly from the carcass, dripping into a small barrel. So this also has my favorite little uh, word printed on it here on locations, uh, or enemies, I guess. Victory 1. So if this has no clues on it at the end of the scenario, this will go to our victory display and get us an extra experience, which we can spend on upgrading cards in our deck, which is, like, awesome. I love it. Okay, so we're going to spawn two clues on it when we entered there and we flipped it over. If we can get those two clues off, which I mean, only one shroud, and we have three intellect, I, I feel pretty good odds we can get that off there. Uh, no problem. Hopefully. I mean, uh, now that I say that, I could draw tokens out of the bag that tell me that's not going to happen, but... Um, okay. Uh, so let's investigate with our last action. Oh, I gotta take a horror. Gotta take a horror. Ooh. Should I just take it on Research Librarian? Yeah, probably, right? Yeah, I'll just uh, take it on, uh, yeah. Let's just take it on Research Librarian, I think, because I only have five, I don't, I don't want to risk taking any. Plus, hopefully we draw into another ally soon, and we can put one out, I hope. I don't know if that's the best play. I don't know if I'm supposed to wait till I take a damage and a horror at the same time. It would probably be more efficient. But I don't have heal. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just put it on the research librarian. Uh, I don't know. That shroud is so high. Yeah, it's so bad. Uh. Okay, so uh, I took my horror. Uh, let's do a intellect test. Three against one. Uh, we got a minus one, so we're still good. And we get a clue. Remember, we're trying to get three clues to advance the act. Oh, this is going to advance too. Hmm. I don't know what that does. Uh, okay, we're done our turn. Uh, enemy phase, again, no enemies. Uh, we reset, ready up any exhausted cards, we draw, flashlight. Okay, we got the flashlight, help us with investigation if we play it. Uh, we get a resource, we're up to three again. Um, we check our hand, one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Now we add a doom uh, to the agenda, which makes it now three doom in play. So that reaches the threshold here on Agenda 1A. So we're going to flip it. And it tells us a lapse in time. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It is almost as if you have been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognize elements of your former home. The lead investigator, that's me, must decide, choose one. Either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. Well, again, I was just talking about how I don't want to take horror, so... And I have a mitt full of cards, half that I feel are pretty useless. 
I don't know, do we have any in here that are like a must that I should not even risk it? I don't think so. I mean, Vicious Blow, if we see a dirty monster, like a big health monster or a weird, awkward, like three damage monster, we can get rid of in one shot, hopefully. Physical training would be nice to keep. Flashlight's kind of cool, but I mean, everything else, I don't know. I think I'm just going to lose a random card. Um, I don't know if I have a die. Do we have six cards? Do I have a D6? Yes, I do. I have a D6. Uh, okay, so one through six. Let's just lose a random card. Number one. Uh-oh. Ah, it's beautiful. I mean, I do like the skill icons on this one, but I mean, whatever. Whatever, man. Okay, so we lost a random card. Um, and that's that. Now, we're on Agenda 2A, which has a threshold of seven now. And it says, Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting through the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. <gasps> ah! Hurry! Okay. Uh, now we draw an encounter card. Grasping... What? Again? Testing agility. Three. For each point you fail by, take a damage. Okay. After I just lost an agility card, you... Oh, I could spend money. Hmm. Hmm. So I would be testing... Two on three, I kind of want to spend two more money on hyper awareness, could get me uh, two extra agility. Should I do it just so I don't take some damage? I have nine health though. Not that worried about the damage, but I don't want to take like three if I, if I draw like a minus two. Hmm. What would you guys do? I, I'm thinking of spending two resources. So that my agility bumps up to four against three at least. We are playing on easy, so I, I gotta I gotta remember that there's like actually not as many negatives, and there's definitely no minus three or minus four. So yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll go up two. Yeah, I'll spend two resources. Okay, so we're at four on three. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The flashlight through my head, actually, I was thinking I only have one resource, but, I mean... I wish we had... Uh, what's that? Dr. Milan to, like, help us get money. He, he helps us do that, right? Oh, a minus two. So I do fail. I do fail, but only by one. So I just take one damage. Eight, see? That's not bad. That's not bad. I'll go with it, right? Okay. Uh, again, no enemies still. See, this is not... Like, I played Guardian, I expect to be smashing enemies getting clues with rolling here. It's not happening. So who, I didn't need a weapon to start the game. <laughs> nice flip. Uh, pitch of blue to pay for the flashlight? I wish. I wish that's how it worked. I'd pitch a physical training. <laughs> I wish. I know what you're talking about. All right. Uh... Okay, okay, uh, so I guess we're just trying to get that other clue off there, so let's just test. Uh, we'll do intellect. Intellect for our first action, uh, do a, uh, sorry, investigate. Investigate with our intellect stat, doing an intellect test. And we pulled a zero. So we definitely get this with three versus one. We have two clues out of the three we need. We now will get this victory point, hopefully. Um, I think you get that, well, I mean, maybe if we fail, it might not give us experience as much. But I think usually you get that stuff. Um, then I will move. And like, I, we obviously have to go to the basement. Or the cellar. But I should, should I move there with no... Yeah, I want to be somewhere... I want to be somewhere with clues on it, right? With Roland, so that if a monster spawns on me, and I fight it, I can get his ability, right? So I don't want to be standing somewhere that has no clues. Hopefully there's clues. There has to be clues here. It's the only place to go. So we're going to go to the cellar. Uh, ooh. What is going on down here? Uh, four shroud. Two clues are going to spawn forest. After you enter the cellar, take a damage. Your cellar seems to have been replaced with an underground network of icy tunnels and caverns. The cold chills you to the core. Oh, this also is victory one. Nice. Nice. 
Okay, so we're going to spawn clues. I have to take a damage. Yep. <laughs> Ow. Damn slippy, slippery stairs. Okay. Uh, and then we're done our turn, right? And enemy phase, nothing. Reset, draw. Working a hunch. Okay, with the four shroud, this helps, right? Because uh, we can spend two on this card as fast. Doesn't take up an action. You can play it during only during your turn. You discover a clue at your location. So if we can fight a monster here and get that clue, and then we can even try to get the victory points by playing this. But worst case, we have this to get that third clue if we don't, if we just want to move on with other victory points. Um, okay, and we're at six cards again, so we're good for card limit. Uh, we're going to put a Doom on the agenda. We're going to draw. Oh no, Dissonant Voices. Revelation, put Dissonant Voices into play in your threat area. You cannot play assets or events. Forced, at the end of the round, you discard Dissonant Voices. Okay, fun times. Fun times. So I can't play... Asset, 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 event. So I can't even do the clue event that I was just talking about working a hunch. Uh, but I could play Vicious Blow, and I can play these as skill cards if I want in tests, right? I just can't pay pay to put them into play. Um, but I can use them as skill cards still. Pretty sure. Okay. But where's my damn monster? I need a monster to fight. Uh, yeah. The only one I drew was at the wrong time. Okay. So investigating a three against four is not smart. Oh, did I get a resource? I forgot to get a resource, didn't I? Yeah, I forgot to get a resource. Thank you. Yeah, I just saw it, Yogi. Thank you. So I do have two. I could throw money at it to get higher intellect, but I mean, I don't know. I could also just draw, hopefully find like Magnifying Glass or Dr. Milan or another uh, ally of some kind. I'd feel a little better having an ally to soak up some damage and horror and give me an ability, obviously. Um, but I can't play it yet, so I gotta be careful with my hand limit. I have six, so if I draw, then I draw at the end of the turn, I'll be at hand limit. Because I won't be able to put an asset or an ally into play. Or an asset, or I can't play an event. Thoughts? Just gain money, draw cards? Should have left that extra zero. <laughs> Should be at two resources. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I got two resources. Thank you. Uh, you could click the clue, move, move, signal so location. Yeah. Oh, okay. David said exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I literally have kind of like a weird turn. Like, uh, yeah, I could just gain money and try Hyper Awareness to help me get it, right? So I'm thinking of gaining two resources and then just doing an intellect test and throwing like two or three resources at it. Oh yeah, the flashlight would help, but I can't put it into play yet. Dissonant Voices. Dissonant Voices. Uh, so how would you guys like do a turn like this where you're kind of like just stuck? Like, obviously, going here doesn't do anything. Going here doesn't do anything. I'm not allowed to go here. So I'm kind of, like, in this weird situation where I should probably just draw or gain money. So let me do that. I'm going to gain two resources and just draw a card. I got Barricade. Yeah, I'll just take a turn to just, like, build up. Oh, and also, too, Ernie says, yeah, going into a, a forced room that, that has a force on it, you have to take the punishment every time. So, yeah, like, why, yeah, I wouldn't want to leave, right? That's another reason. But there's nothing to do anywhere else. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, I wouldn't want to go. Obviously, if we had enemies somewhere else, maybe I'd go fight one or something. But that's not happening. Okay, so we're done. Uh, enemies reset. I have a draw. First aid. And a resource. So we're at five resources and eight cards. So we're at our hand limit, but we don't have to discard yet. Uh, we're going to throw a Doom on the agenda. Draw a card. Obs oh yeah, this goes away. End of the round. All right. And then we have Obscuring Fog. Attach to your location. Limit once per location. Attach location gets plus two shroud. Oh no. So e this like counteracts the flashlight. And then Force. After this location is successfully investigated... Discover, discard Obscuring Fog. 
So I don't think working a hunch gets rid of that because uh, uh, it just discovers a clue. That's not actually investigating. <laughs> oh boy. I'm just going to move my cards over here. Attach this to the bottom here. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, encounter deck. Uh, I want an enemy. You won't give me one. And you're messing with me. That's what the game does. <laughs> Roland is so great at getting clues. <laughs> damn you, Ernie. Damn you. <laughs> All right. Well, we only need one clue, and we can just get it with working a hunch, right? I say we just do it. I say we just do it. So I'm going to spend two resources, play it working a hunch. It doesn't cost an action, and we'll discover one clue at our location. I want that other one off there for victory points, though. But, like, I, I, like are we going to see an enemy? That's the thing. Like, I need an enemy to do it. That's what Roland's ability does, but... I could also, uh, flashlight and hyper awareness. That would put me down to like four and then I, uh, I don't have enough for that. I don't think. Hmm. It's not like I have a handful of intellect icons either. I have two. Hmm. <laughs> Yogi says I would just press F for that one victory point. <laughs> the game doesn't want to let me have it. Okay, uh, so I've done no actions yet, right? All I did was play working a hunch, which is fast. And I have to wait till the end of the round for this to happen. So again, I have three actions again, just chilling. Um, I have to be in the hallway though. Should I do some crazy stuff to try to get it? I could throw flashlight and barricade in there for two. I could play the flashlight. Where is it? Flashlight. Oh no, the flashlight's here. Flashlight I would play. I mean, I might as well try. <laughs> yeah, let's try. Let's try. Let's be funny. Let's try. Uh, I mean, we can take another round before going back to the hallway. Yeah, we got a 45. I have a weapon. I have a weapon. I have a weapon. We're good. So let's play the flashlight. Let's have some fun. Uh, we'll play the flashlight for one action. Uh, we'll put three supplies on it. Uh, we are going to gain a resource for our second action. Then we're going to investigate using the flashlight's action. Spend a supply off of the card. Uh, to investigate our location, it gets minus two shroud. So that kind of counteracts the obscuring fog, so it's back to a four. Then, we're going to spend two resources on hyper-awareness to give us plus two intellect. So we're going up to, uh, we have three here, four, five, spending these two resources. And then I'm going to throw a barricade in for six. Okay, as it has one intellect symbol on the left side. So we're at six on four. Seems legit. Was it all a big waste? Probably, but we'll, we'll see. May, hopefully not, because we're playing on easy, right? So the bag is not so punishing. But now that I did all that, this is where I'm going to pull the red token. This is how it usually works. When you put way too many eggs in one basket, uh, the game knows. Oh, it just knows. No, Janet, I'm not giving up on that victory point. I'm not, you know me. I Yeah, you're saying uh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, you'd keep the barricade? That's just to keep, like, enemies out of somewhere, right? Uh, no, it's six on four, because remember the uh, obscuring fog uh, adds plus two shroud to the location. We have an obscuring fog attached on here. Right? So flashlight kind of counters out that, so it's back to four. Unless I'm missing something. Pretty sure. I mean, we can keep the barricade. 
10 chaos if you think oh, like just being up plus one is okay because we still have the chance that we're staying here an enemy will land on us so this this card attached to your location non-elite enemies cannot move into attached location I don't remember this scenario that well. Is there a point where like enemies are going to try to like come and get me and I need them to stay away? Like, I, I don't know if Roland cares about this, but maybe. Yeah, the auto fail is in here. I would keep that in the test. Oh, Mel says I would keep it in the test. Okay. Okay. We got the skull. Uh, we have no ghoul enemies, so we're up two still. So Obscuring Fog goes away because we successfully investigated. That skill card spent. We got the clue. So we're going to get another victory point later, which we can spend on experience cards, which is all good. Uh, that was maybe too much into a test, but <laughs> for the victory point. For the victory point. And I think that's our turn. Done. Enemy phase, nothing. Uh, reset. Draw. Oh yeah, plus I had extra cards in hand. Oh no, I played uh, Flashlight and stuff. So we were, we were good. So I drew in a guard dog. So we have another ally, somewhere that can put horror and damage. And when he's a dealt damage, uh, he'll deal one damage to the attacking enemy. Ooh, we need to get him in play. If we can. Uh, and we'll take a resource. So we need three resources to get him in play though. Uh, after we just blew all that money. Okay, uh, another Doom. And... Bad card. Oh, man. Yeah, this is weird. Uh, rotting Remains. Revelation. Test will of three. Each point you fail by, take a horror. Oh, no. Oh, uh, this is not good. So it's like the other one with the agility test. Hmm. And our, our, our willpower is three by default. So it's a three on three. I think I'm putting the old book in there. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the old book. I really, yeah. I'll put the old book in. All right, so we're four on three. Oh, we got our elder sign, which is plus one for each clue in your location, which is zero. So it's still just a zero. That's fine. Still not a negative two or a auto fail or something. So we're good. We don't lose any horror or take any horror. Sorry, lose any sanity. Okay, so that's not bad. So now we... Oh, sorry, the end of the round thing happened, right? Oh no, we gotta be in the hallway. Oops, we gotta be in the hallway. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Now we're gonna move to the hallway. Yes, move to the hallway. Uh, then we're going to... Uh, how do we do this? Can we get the guard dog in? No, we can't, right? Resource, resource, that's all our actions. Maybe I just take one resource. Yeah. Yeah, I'll play, I'll take one resource. Uh, actually, I'll take two resources and just end it there. Commit everything to those garbage tests. <laughs> oh yeah, physical training would be nice to uh, put into play, I was thinking, but maybe I don't. Maybe I'll just save it for the fight or the I know, I, I probably could have put that into the test, yeah, maybe. I'm just trying to get the guard dog into play now, that's my like main objective. So we're done. Uh, no enemies. Uh, we're gonna reset, draw. We got the medical texts. Medical texts. Uh, and we gain another resource. And then, end of the round. Uh, when the round ends, oh, let's check our hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, we're good. Uh, when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance. So it's not forest, you can may, but I will. I'll spend three. And, uh, breaking the barrier. All right, so it says, using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage of the parlor is vanished. Reveal the parlor. So two shroud, no clues. Oh, there's the resign action. So we could just end the scenario right there by spending an action. 
to resign. It says, this is too much for me. You run out the front door fleeing in panic. Or it says, while Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, she gains action parlay. Test intellect of four. If you succeed, take control of Lita. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Put the set aside Lita Chandler into play at the parlor. So here's Lita. Zero cost asset. Lita Chandler, the zealot. Ally, while you control Lita, she gains each investigator your location gets plus one fight, and she has a reaction. Uh, when an investigator your location successfully attacks a monster enemy, that investigator deals plus one damage. So monster enemies have to have the trait monster. And this says spawn the set aside ghoul priest in the hallway. Oh, I'm in the hallway. Uh oh. So this guy's a monster. As you can see, he's a humanoid. Humanoid monster ghoul elite. His prey is going after the highest strength, but it's solo, so it's me no matter what. He's a hunter. He retaliates, which means if you try to fight him and you miss, he will hit you back for two damage and two horror each time. He's victory point two. Uh, if we can defeat him, a figure in red robes wearing a bone mask, it gibbers and snarls before leaping to attack. So he is four to fight this guy. We haven't really seen fighting yet, which I was hoping we'd see earlier, but. Uh, so to do a fight test against this guy, it's, you're, you're testing against four. He has five health per investigator, so we're playing solo. He's just five health. And to evade him, you have to do an agility test and succeed uh, against four. So he is spawning in the hallway, which means he's engaged with us. He's engaged with us right away. Hmm. That's sucky. Are we ready for this? Are we ready? I mean, we have the gun. Hmm, okay. Uh, and that's all that says. And it says, what have you done on Act 3A? A woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmering of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. Objective. So there's usually multiple ways to end the scenario with lots of different resolutions you can reach. Uh, this one's objective is if the ghoul priest is defeated at advance, which I'm going to assume on the back of this is a resolution based on you defeating the ghoul priest, but we could also resign, which that will probably lead to a different resolution with different outcomes and different story implications. Um, and then there's probably one on the agenda. If you if it, things keep going and you take too long, uh, sometimes the scenario will punish you uh, if the agenda deck runs out and you'll hit a different resolution. Or if you're just defeated, that could be a different resolution. So lots of different options and, and cool replayability and little story endings and stuff uh, that you can see when you play. Drop Vicious Blow and shoot him twice, enough is said. Oh yeah, because he's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But can we get Lita? Should we try to get Lita? Can we take the hit? Yeah, we could take the hit from him. He hits for two sanity, two horror, uh, two damage, two, san two horror. Oh, I wish we got the dog in play just to soak up a bit of that. Because we could move, right? If you move, an enemy follows you. But remember, if an enemy is engaged with you and you do anything but attack, evade, parlay, which she's a parlay action, or resign. So uh, you could do the parlay action on here and he's not going to hit you, but he would hit you if you moved. So I could move here, bring him with me. He hits me for two horror and two damage. And then I do the parlay action. But I need four intellect, which I literally have zero in hand. Oh, but I have four resources. I could spend it on hyper awareness to try to get Lita. And the only reason I'm thinking of getting Lita, I don't think I need her for this fight. Well, she is an ally, actually. She would help me with Soak. So yeah, getting the guard dog in play would be stupid, right? Because you take her and then you get rid of the guard dog in my only ally slot. Is that silly to try to do? Because I remember playing this before. There's a way you can get Lita in your deck and, and join you. And sometimes that happens in campaigns. So part of me thinking, I'm thinking forward in the campaign. But I might be wrong, so it might be a waste. 
but she is a way to soak up damage. I don't need her to just fight this guy and advance the act deck, I think. Because I have lots of fight. I have lots of fight skills in hand, so I should be able to pass fight tests. Flip just says, just shoot. If Lita thinks you're worthy, maybe she sticks with you. I'm trying not to spoil. I know what can happen to Lita later, but I don't know if you always get her at the end of the scenario. That I do not remember. But we'll find out when we read our resolution what happens. But I know sometimes from playing this game, you have to have the ally under your control. And sometimes you get them and sometimes you don't. I don't know. It's just a theory. You can have a chat parlay with re. Don't overthink it. <laughs> can you get Lita? Can you pass the parlay? Uh, the parlay is a four. And I have four resources. And remember, I have hyper awareness. So I literally could get plus four intellect. So I'd be at uh, seven on four. But I could fail that. I could fail that. <laughs> and if I fail that and have no money left, that was the one shot I get. This guy would hit me for moving in there. He would then hit me on the enemy phase. I don't think I can evade him. I mean, I could spend the money to evade this guy. But then I wouldn't have the money to do a parlay test. One more sanity from the encounter deck, you're dead. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, also, yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking through because if I move in uh, and do the parlay, I've used up two actions. I can shoot the guy one time, but he's not dead, obviously. He's going to hit me. That puts me, unless I get Lita and I can put horror on here for sure and damage, I feel comfortable. But if I don't get Lita and I fail on the parlay, I would be sitting at one horror left. And if this deck flips over another one of these cards and I fail a willpower test and get myself some horror or something, I could be done. So it's like kind of risky. But I'm just talking through this from a new player perspective. Like these are the kind of thoughts that you need to think about when you're playing the game. Like there is all these cool things you can do and you can push your luck. And that's a huge theme in the game and like pushing your luck, trying to be efficient. You know, sometimes you can pull out some crazy things just because luck goes your way. Um, but yeah. Oh, and the other thing is his retaliate. He could hit me back when I miss hits. So I should just probably try to fight him now and because I might miss a shot. I might not be able to beat him anyway if I just take him straight on, right? Do a pull. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. You guys can keep me uh, from being too crazy here. Uh, what to do? So option one will be go for Lita, which is probably the more risky option. Or stay and fight. The other thing is we could have the encounter deck drop an enemy on us again. And then if that guy is hitting us for damage and horror, and we're, we're, we could get way out of control here. <laughs> and she doesn't get us some more victory points or anything that I know of. Maybe she does in the resolution. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe having Lita gets you like bonus experience. Again, I don't remember. And we'll find out when we get, get our ending. So you guys can vote. I put a poll in the live chat. So you watching, whether you know the scenario or you know what the outcomes are or you don't, you see what's happening here. Talk me off the ledge. If I should just be fighting the Ghoul Priest, vote for that. Staying in fight. If I should be going for Lita and grabbing her or trying to, trying to grab her. <laughs> no, I'm not putting vote to go to the attic. <laughs> Go to the attic and take a horror? Get out of here. So go ahead and vote in the live chat. I'll leave it up for a couple minutes. You guys can impact how we go forward with this. And we're going to do the same thing tomorrow when we're playing uh, the second and third scenario. 
Hopefully we can do both those tomorrow. We'll play a little quicker. Um, but we are playing Elder Sign, uh, the dice version of Arkham Horror. We're playing that tonight live. Mel and I are going to play two-player. Uh, we've mixed in some stuff from a couple expansions, uh, so you guys can tune in for that. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, for those that are curious. Uh, that's why we're only playing one scenario today here, just because I have another stream later. And I want to keep this video kind of like just contained and as spoiler-ish free as possible. All right, so I'm going to end the poll. And I'm sure you guys are, you know, going to going to do the right thing here and make sure I'm not being an idiot. I mean, I still, yeah, I'm still an idiot, but not as much of an idiot. All right. All right, so the chat's saying stay and fight, 61%. Thank you, everyone that voted. All right, so let's just fight. Okay, uh, so that was all from the breaking the barrier. That was end of the round, right? End of the round, that advanced. So now we need to go to the mythos phase. Our fourth out of seven doom on the agenda. We're going to draw a card here. Yep. A ravenous ghoul. So I, I actually have to take this enemy on. Uh, he's going to engage with me right away. So now I have two enemies engaged with me. <laughs> Finally you see an enemy when I don't need one. Uh, perfect. Okay. So we're just fighting. And we won't get attack of opportunities uh, from either enemy as long as we're doing fights, evades, parlays, or resigns. Uh, we have no parlay or resigns at our location, so fight or evading is all we really can do without getting beaten up by both these guys. Uh, so let's just fight. All right, so we're going to use our 45 automatic, which we've had out for the entire game. Uh, we're going to spend one bullet, or one shot, one ammo. Uh, it says fight. You get plus one fight for this attack. The attack deals plus one damage. So uh, that will put my fight value at five against four. And I can throw in a vicious blow. As a skill card, it gets us plus one here. But it also says if the skill test is successful, uh, it, the attack deals plus one damage. So we could do three there. So now we're up two. And... Uh, I have four fight icons in hand, so I gotta be smart. I gotta think like if a shot fails, I don't have another vicious blow. Uh, I'll need three to succeed then, which uh, it'll definitely go another round. So, ugh. I'm gonna throw medical text in there. Go plus three. Is there even anything a minus three? No, it's just the auto fail, right? Because this is ghoul enemies at my location, I have two. So the skull is minus two. The cultist is minus one. Uh, the tablet's minus two. If there's a ghoul enemy, I take a damage. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll just go up plus two. Yeah, yeah, there's no need for plus three. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, like, not used to this. Uh, and we messed with the bag mid-play. Mid <laughs> yeah, worst case is minus two. Or, yeah, we won't talk about the other worst case. It's not truly the worst case. <laughs> Yeah, if I don't kill the priest, I'm dead now because we have a ghoul, right? A zero, okay. Whew. Okay. So we're going to do three damage uh, to the ghoul priest. And he's two more and he's dead. So now we're going to fight again. We're going to fire another bullet from the 45 automatic, uh, which puts us at five on four. And I'm going to throw in a uh, kniffy, uh, one knife to get, we're up plus two. And this will deal the two damage we need. But if we fail on this one, we have one more action left in our turn. We can fire one more time. And I still have guard dog and a physical training that I have. Oh, and a medical text. Yeah, I guess I could have just thrown medical text in there. Whatever. Ten tickles. <laughs> one now, three later. Minus two. There we go. We're still good. We're still good. We're up two. So we got him. We got him. So five out of five, it is dead. Uh, when we when we uh, kill this guy, he goes to the victory display because he's victory two. So we 
technically are seeing victory two, three, and four in play. Oh, I feel pretty good about that. I think we saw one enemy that had a victory. Yeah, this guy didn't spawn at the right time, but we could have had another way to get a victory point off this guy. But unfortunately, sometimes victory points, the randomness, the RNG, uh, just doesn't even give you the opportunity sometimes. Or just the order of things happening. So, uh, we did our objective. So it says, if the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. Uh, so defending the home. All right, when the robed creature falls, the fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground and the chaos of the house quiets. But the stranger in your parlor doesn't seem relieved. She says, you broke my seal that was set up to trap the ghouls within. She raises her torch. Now we must take more direct measures and burn this hell pit to the ground. So we have a choice. I, I think I'm gonna put this one to the poll, uh, to the chat. You guys are gonna decide. The lead investigator must decide. Choose one. It was never much of a home. Burn it down. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Uh, or that leads to resolution one. Or this hell pit is my home. No way we're burning it. Resolution two. <laughs> so two options of different resolutions here, uh, which I think is so clever, it's so cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, we got a poll coming for sure. <laughs> uh, what to do? Burn our house down for Lita or uh, what was it exactly that was the word? Or Keep the house standing. All right, you guys can decide. I'll put the poll in chat for a couple minutes and uh, then we'll go to our resolution and we'll figure out what happens uh, and what we have to do. And then if we get any experience, which I hope we do, uh, I think we will. And then we will uh, upgrade the deck for tomorrow's scenario. And while you guys are voting, I'm just going to start cleaning up some stuff. But yeah, we didn't see the last uh, agenda. There's another agenda that would have done some things too. So we were kind of quick, right? That was like really fast, I think. But again, playing on easy, solo, it's kind of weird. Like there's not as many cards coming off the deck, right? So like if I was the Guardian playing with a couple other investigators at the table, or at least one other, there might be more chance of enemies spawning and I have more things to go do, but I literally never use Roland's ability once. Uh, so weird. Um, but yeah, like... Yeah, and, oh, look at the next card. Would have been the horror test one that I was talking about. Oh, some rats. Yeah, would have been nice to see some rats earlier to kill them for clues, right? Uh, but yeah. I guess I should sort this out. All right. Oh yeah, and okay. Just gonna sort the scenario uh, to get it ready for tomorrow. So yeah, just break it up because in the revised core set there are some uh, encounter sets. I mean, in the regular core set too. Uh, even though they're packaged, the scenarios are packaged separately. Uh, scenarios two and three don't have all the cards included in the packaging even though they're packaged separate. So make sure you look uh, when you're doing scenario two. Uh, you'll need to pull, uh, looks like this one, the frozen one here, or whatever that one, the wind symbol. Uh, you'll need that from the first set uh, with the obscuring fog and stuff and crypt chill. Uh, you'll need that before you play the second set. And then... Oh, we didn't see this card. I hate this card. Ancient Evils. Place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the agenda to advance. So yeah, it was nice not seeing that. Uh, those here. Oh, there's three of them. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, what am I doing? So yeah, no little rats. <laughs> 
No little rats. Okay, so that's set up. These we'll put with the next one. Okay. Oh yeah, forgot this guy. Oh, these two guys. Okay, we need the deck for going through it. Um, and figuring out what our experience spend is. Okay, let's end the poll. So 54% uh, want us to burn the house down for Lido. Okay, uh, what does that do? That was, was that resolution one? Yes, resolution one. Uh, resolution one. So I'm not gonna hold it up too close, but uh, there's a resolution for if you resigned or were defeated. We're not gonna do that, we skip that. We go to resolution one, but there is resolution two and three. So there's like different things that can happen. Uh, you nod to allow the red-haired woman to set the walls and floor of your house ablaze. The fire spreads quickly and you run out the front door to avoid being caught in the inferno. From the sidewalk you watch as everything you own is consumed by the flames. Come with me, the woman says. You must be told of the threat that lurks below. Alone, are, we are surely doomed, but together we can stop it. In your campaign log, record that your house is burned to the ground. So let's actually check out this Arkham Cards app here. Uh, and try a campaign thing. So supposedly this little app you can find, I know it's on Android, I'm assuming it's on iOS. Um, we can start a new campaign. So normally you just use the back of the sheet uh, you can use the back of your book or print copies off of Fantasy Flight Games website. There's also better printer friendly versions accorded, uh, included in the file section on uh, boardgamegeek.com, FYI. Um, but we're going to do the Night of the Zealot. Wait, what is this? Oh, I, I... What? I guess that was... These are like test ones or something? Campaigns. Or is this pulling it from Arkham DB or something? I don't know. I, I didn't put that in there. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, use the app for scenario setup and resolutions. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I should have done that. I didn't know. We'll do that tomorrow. I didn't know this app does that. This is my first time trying to use it here for a campaign. So let's add our investigator. We'll add the deck. Uh, no. I already put the Silver Twilight Acolyte in that, uh, comes with the starter deck. It's just asking us if we want to remove it. Oh, from the campaign's basic weakness set. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Oh, because we can use this to draw random basic weaknesses too, right? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, no, no, no. I see. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. No, no. Oh, I must have all of the content enabled. Whoopsie. Uh, okay. So it's just building our weakness set, which is, I'll just use the core set ones. Uh, cause we're just playing with just a revised core set. My Night of the Zealot campaign. Campaign setup. Oh, that's cool. How do we... Oh, I should have done this before. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, oh, it actually walks you through the story and stuff. Man, this is a very slick little app. Uh, choose our difficulty. We did it easy. Oh, that's so cool. Look how nice this is. Yeah, sorry, guys. I've never used this before. I know you guys recommended it always, but I, I've never really got it. I thought today I'd try it out. I should have done it at the start. We should have walked through it. I didn't realize we'd need to go through all this setup stuff. I didn't realize it took control of all this stuff. Uh, proceed to the gathering. Yeah. Start. Continue. So we did all this. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. 
campaign log, chaos bag, weakness, draw random, trauma, record, scenario, end. How do we... Oh, will it automatically? Oh, Brian's saying if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can get auto narration for the campaign text. Oh, that's cool. Huh. I think I just go to the end, right? And then that'll, that'll do all our records. We got resolution, what was it, one? Yeah, resolution one. Okay, cool. Record that you burned your house to the ground. Oh look, the lead investigator earns the lead of Chandler card and may include it in their deck. This card does not count toward the investigator's deck size. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, so I didn't need to, you guys knew that. You guys knew I didn't need to go get Lita. I didn't know. I forgot, I didn't know. Um, I thought you had to have her in your control. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe that's like a different resolution or something. Doesn't count towards deck size. So we get Lita Chandler. She's now joining us uh, along our little expedition in the deck. Another ally. We tell them that Roland gets Lita. Roland Banks earns... Oh, look at this. It fills it in. I am impressed. I am very impressed. This is a cool little app here. A lot of work. A lot of work went into this app here. Uh, the lead investigator suffers one mental trauma for watching their home become a smoldering ruin. Aw. Roland Banks suffers one mental trauma. Oh, no. Each investigator earns experience equal to victory X value of car each card in the victory display, which was four. And then, oh, each investigator earns two bonus experience as they gain insight into the hidden world of the mythos. Included automatically. Victory display was one, two, three, four. Update decks with scenario results. The number below already includes all the trauma, victory points, and story assets you may have and earn during the resolution. If you have any other cards or effects that the app does not take care of, you can make adjustments below before saving each investigator. Oh, this is, this is slick. Very slick. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you guys before and use this app a long time ago. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I use it just to like modify decks before. I, did, I never did the campaign thing. It's really cool. Yeah, it's called Arkham Cards. For anyone that does not know this app, you can get it download on Android. Is it on iOS? Does anyone know? I, I've never checked on iOS, but... Uh... How are they at Gen Chaos with keeping it updated when new sets drop? Do you have to like wait a little bit? Or like, uh, like how quickly after a pack hits the hits the street, uh, do they incorporate the cards and stuff in this? Oh, Drew says it is on iOS. That's awesome. Oh, so did Brian. Okay, cool, perfect. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Uh, so we earned six XP and we got Lita Chandler. We're gonna save. Is this modifying it on Arkham DB two? Can you? Oh, how do we, um, how do we, uh, oh, right here. Oh, man, look at this. Okay, so we have the deck here. 30 card count, 34 total, 0 XP, 6 unspent. Parallel, original front, original back. So I, I'm assuming we just hit the edit button. Oh, draw simulator charts, upgrade with XP, edit, upgrade with XP.
No. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, guys. I'm a noob with this stuff here. Oh, this is cool. All right. Uh, okay, so let's spread out some cards. Let's uh, let's talk about what our options are for six XP. In the revised core set only. So I don't know if this has a way for me to change my collection to only show the revised core set, but I, I couldn't find it when I was looking earlier. So I think I just turned on everything because there are some cards that are different in here that might be filtered out if I just pick, you know, two core sets or whatever. So let's, uh, we can only have up to level two for seeker cards. And we can have all the neutral cards. And the Guardian. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. I need you here. I need your help. I'll need your help too. I appreciate you guys being at the table with me right now. So let's go through what we can upgrade in the revised core set for Roland. Okay. We're going to look at some cards. We'll narrow it down and we'll do some polls. If we have some things that are like, you know, there's some suggestions in the chat that like want to spend the XP different ways. Uh, but let's figure this out now. Uh, extra ammunition. You can place three ammo tokens on a firearm asset controlled by an investigator location. Costs only one XP each. We have police badge. Costs two XP. You get plus one willpower while this is in play. It takes up the amulet slot. It's got a free action on it. While an investigator location is taking his or her turn, discard police badge. That investigator may take two additional actions this turn. Hmm. Oh, good old beat cop. Uh, so we do have a beat cop in the deck. So for you guys to understand, those that don't know this game that well, uh, usually there's like cards that could replace uh, existing cards at lower levels, uh, and it'll make them like more efficient. So if we look at the beat cop that's included for zero XP, it's a two, two, and it has an ability to discard beat cop, deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Cost four, only has one skill icon. The two experience version, still costs four to play, has an extra skill icon, still gives you plus one fight, but look at this ability, exhaust beat cop, deal one damage to it, then you deal one damage to an enemy at your location. So he can stick around for a little longer, doesn't have to go away, and he soaks up a little more damage. So that's a cool one. I remember, I remember upgrading this one before. Oh no. Oh no. Shotgun. Or experience to get one copy of shotgun in your deck. Uses two ammo. So I feel like we would need some extra ammo if we were to take the shotgun. I think that's what we did before in a previous playthrough on the channel. Uh, so this one, you can action. Spend one ammo to fight, just like the 45 automatic. You get plus three fight for the attack. But instead of its standard damage, the attack deals one damage for each point you succeed by. To a minimum of one, to a maximum of five. If you fail and would damage another investigator, which doesn't matter because we're playing solo. The attack deals one damage point uh, for each you fail by minimum of one, max of zero. Takes up two hand slots, though. Takes up two hand slots. So we couldn't do, like, holding a flashlight or a magnifying glass and the 45 automatic, all that kind of stuff. You can't hold it with uh, the shotgun. They have an upgrade of first aid for three. Puts four uses on it. If first aid has no supplies, discard it. Spend one to heal a damage and a horror from an investigator or ally asset in your location. <coughs> Some of these would seem better if we were playing with more investigators than one, though, I think. <laughs> yes, Bob, I remember. Bob the beat cop. And then we also have, uh, I've had worse. Oh, I like the skill icons across the side of this one. It's free, costs four XP to get one copy in the deck though. It's fast, so it doesn't cost an action. Play when you're dealt damage and or horror. Cancel up to five damage and or horror just dealt to you, then gain that many resources. I feel like this was in Daniel Cho's deck. That's where I first experienced this card, but I could be wrong. But uh, that's an interesting one. Because in that last scenario, uh, if we would have got retaliated on by that, uh, by the, uh, what was he called? The, 
the ghoul priest, he hits us for two and two. We could have prevented all of that and took, got free, uh, got four resources out of it. I mean, that's super situational, but a very clever card. I, I mean, that would be neat, but uh, it's expensive. We get one copy for four XP. That's kind of harsh. All right. So we only have so many Seeker cards because remember, Roland can only, uh, can only take uh, level zero to two Seeker cards in the deck according to his deck building restrictions on the back of his card, right? So for one, we have upgraded Magnifying Glass. I love Magnifying Glass, one of my favorite cards. Uh, and I do have one in the deck. I just didn't see it yet. Uh, but normally, the one I have in the deck, and I mean, I could put a second one in and not have to replace the existing one, right? I could have one level one and one level zero in there to make some more consistency. Uh, it takes up one hand slot. It's fast, so you don't waste an action playing this. It only costs one, but you just get plus one while investigating. I, I, I love it. It's just, yeah, just good. More, more successes in stat tests, right? But the other one costs zero, you get plus one while investigating. It also has a free action. If there's no clues on your location, you can return it to your hand. So I'm assuming I would do that as a free action to free up a hand slot after I feel like I've got enough clues. And then I can slap down like a gun or something or something else to take up the hand slot. I assume that's why you would do that. Or I could do cute things like keep it out of play so it's safe on the table, not when you have to discard an asset. Or, um... I could have it back to hand when I feel I don't need it anymore, and it could be a card that gets discarded by the encounter deck, uh, messing with my hand or something. I don't know, what else? Or I just played as a skill card after. Anyways, that's cool. It's just cool to see how they like change cards as they upgrade them. Like, it's the same card. Okay, so we got Disc of it's Itzamna. This one costs two experience for a copy of it. Nice skill icons along the left side. It's an amulet. Uh, it's got a reaction, free reaction, when a non-elite enemy spawns at your location, you can discard this to discard that enemy. So this would not be defeating the enemy, so I wouldn't get a clue from Roland's ability, I wouldn't think. I would not think, I would not think. Oh, Encyclopedia, I like this card too. Uh, so two, uh, experience, has the wild skill icon on the left side there. Uh, it's an item. Oh, it's a tome. So it kind of goes with the little theme in my deck, a tiny little theme uh, module I have in the deck. Uh, exhaust Encyclopedia for an action. Choose an investigator at your location. That investigator gets plus two to a skill of your choice until the end of the phase. So if I knew a round where I was stuck somewhere and trying to get clues, I could use an action to exhaust this. You get plus two intellect. And then my next two actions try to get the clues, you know. Or if I'm monster fighting, uh, the only problem is exhausting this. You could get an attack of opportunity if the monster's already engaged with you. And if they're not, I remember being kind of restricted, like you'd exhaust this to get plus two attack. Then I move. Then I literally only have one shot to attack the enemy. Um, but it could be good for evading, though, too, if you have enemies surrounding you. I remember that was good. Uh, for two experience, we have Seeking Answers. One cost. Uh, it's an event. You get, it's an investigate action. If you succeed, discover two total clues from among your location and connecting locations. So if you have a monster or a couple monsters guarding some clues and you don't want to go in and fight them and do all that stuff and you don't need to go over in that direction, uh, you could just gain the clues this way from a connecting location and then saves yourself some actions, some headache, getting in there to get the clues. Also, if it's a high shroud location, right? High Shroud location would be nice. Okay. Uh, for neutral cards, we have Bulletproof Vest, cost three experience. It's a body slot item, which we, I don't think we have any of in our deck, so this wouldn't, wouldn't have trouble putting this into play, but it's a place just to put uh, damage. Kind of like an ally. <coughs> Excuse me. Cost two to play, though. And doesn't have like an ally ability. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, another card I like. This is the horror version of that. Takes up an amulet slot. Elder Sign Amulet. Just basically a place to soak up for horror. 
which I feel like Roland will probably have in his deck by the end of this campaign, uh, based on me already getting one mental trauma. We got an upgrade to emergency cash. You guys got to see that in use. It was gain three resources, but this version gets you three resources and draws you a card. Those cost two experience each. Good old charisma. This gives you an additional ally slot. It's permanent, so it starts the game in play. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So it starts in play, you get an additional ally slot. And then we got Relic Hunter, which is permanent. You get an additional accessory slot. So this costs three. I don't feel like we haven't started with any accessories. But I mean, if I was to get Elder Sign Amulet in the deck, and eventually like Police Badge or something, you know, you, you might want a Relic Hunter so you can wear two of them. But that's it. This is what I get to choose from as Roland. Uh, playing the revised core set only. And now I want to look at the chat to see your suggestions. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, Bob's getting Yogi to give us pro tips here. So we have six experience to spend. So we could do a mix of things. We could replace things in the deck. Uh, you know, uh, Charisma 3, Magnifying Glass 1 to replace Medical Text, and then a Beat Cop 2 to replace Mind Over Matter. Yeah, mine over matter matter was nah. And Bob says upgraded magnifying glass lets you free up a hand slot for shotgun. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Drew says, I love envisioning Roland putting pulling out an encyclopedia in the middle of a scenario. Yeah, yeah. It's like monsters all around. He's like, hold on one sec. <laughs> one sec, I have to look up something. Uh, Flip says, uh, Police Badge 3 for Medical Text, Encyclopedia 2 for Hyper Awareness, and then Extra Ammo 1 for Mind Over Matter. Man, those are, yeah, those are completely different. That's cool. Uh, yeah, the, the Teddy Bear we can't have in Roland's deck, right? Because it's a Survivor card? Yeah, it's Survivor, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it's in here though. That's a leather coat. Rabbit's foot, stray cat. I I don't think teddy bear is in here. <laughs> or whatever it's called. Is it called teddy bear? I don't remember. I think a card's called uh isn't it called like Teddy Ruxpin or something? I don't know. Anyways, okay. What else? What else? Badge is only two. Bob says, remember, Rob, you could investigate a location with no clues and use looking for clues to yoink the clues from a connecting location. Oh, okay, that's clever. I like that. Seeking answers, okay. Looking for clues? Do I have that one? I was thinking of evidence. Yeah, I think it just mean uh, seeking answers, right? Yeah, that'd be cool. Or magnifying glass instead of ammo, take your choice. Upgrade, cop is good. Draw you a card, get you closer to your trauma. Man, so many cool options. Uh, remember that cost is one extra XP to replace a card. If you upgrade a card, you don't pay the extra fee. Mm. Is that true, Ernie? I thought it's only if you replace a level zero with a level zero, you have to pay that one still. But you're telling me if I just want to put a fresh encyclopedia in my deck, I have to pay three experience? Because I'm not replacing an encyclopedia? Is that right? I, I don't remember. I, I, for, I didn't think that was how it worked. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I have encyclopedia, right? So I'm just double checking. Yeah, no. Hmm. Oh, that's not how it works? 
Yeah, Ernie is saying, remember that it costs one extra XP to replace a card. If you upgrade a card, you don't have to pay the extra fee. Oh, Cherish Keepsake is the name of the teddy bear. That's what it is. Yogi says, it's one XP to swap a level zero for a level zero. I remember that. I remember that was so annoying. Uh, which is probably what you're thinking of. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think it even says right in here. I think uh, right in the campaign guide. Just let's double check. Uh, so expanded campaign rules are in here. Earning and spending experience. As an investigator delves deeper into mythos, he or she gains insight into the hidden truths of the world, the ancient ones, monsters that dwell in the shadows, and the secrets that humanity was never meant to know. The, this insight manifests in the form of experience. During the resolution of a scenario, investigators may earn one or more experience. Each investigator earns experience separately, and investigators may not transfer experience from one investigator to another. Experience can often be obtained by placing, uh, placing encounter cards worth victory points in the victory display or through story decisions. Okay. Experience may be spent to learn new abilities or spells or to acquire new items and weapons in the form of additional cards. Adding a new card to a deck costs experience equal to the card's level denoted by one or more white pips in the top left corner of the card. Adding a new card to your deck always costs at least one experience. And it requires that you maintain your deck size, usually by removing a card. Yeah, that at least one experience just means that even if you add a level zero in, it always costs at least one, but it's not an additional one. Some cards represent a higher version of a card with the same title. These cards have the same title as their other versions, but may have additional effects, additional skill icons, and different costs. If a player has a lower level version of a card and wishes to purchase a higher level version, he or she may upgrade that card by spending experience equal to the difference in level between the two. The new version is added to the deck and the older version is removed. So we could check the rules reference too on that. Uh, but yeah, you don't pay the extra experience unless it's a zero for a zero. Yeah, unless it's a zero for a zero. Okay, so uh, let's figure out what we're doing. Uh, Yogi's recommending Charisma, but like we literally, there was like not a chance to get two allies into play. But we do have Lita now, and hopefully we don't have so much trouble drawing allies in the future. <laughs> uh, so let me make some poll options here. Uh, actually, let's uh, let's get them sorted out first. Let's get them sorted out first. So we have uh, Yogi's is Charisma. Magnifying glass, oh, I like it, and a beat cop, and that would total six XP. Okay, that's option one. Uh, another option we had there, uh, let me go down and find it. Uh, Eddie's had police badge three. Uh, it's police badge only two, police badge two in this set. There might be a level three, but this one is only two, and then encyclopedia two. And extra ammo, but then you also said could be a magnifying glass or extra ammo. Magnifying glass uh, or extra ammo. Actually, it could be both, right? Because that's six. So it could, it could be both. So we'll say, we'll say that's an option. Oh, yeah, I see. The badge is only two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys got it. You guys got it. Uh, I'm just scrolling, scrolling through the previous chat. Yeah, if I upgraded the same card, there would be a discount. But again, I'll, my deck's only full of level zeros, so the difference is nothing, right? Like, it's the difference is the cost of the new card, anyway. How many allies are in the deck? Let's find out. Can we see in the Arkham Cards app really easy? Not really, right? Oh, right here. We have Beat Cop. Dr. Malayan, Guard Dog, Research Librarian, and now Lita. So five. Five allies. 
Charisma is worth it at five. Okay, I'll put up a poll in a sec with those those two options so far. I'm just seeing those are only two that are like complete options that are like telling me what to replace and everything. <laughs> Can I put Rob's option in? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Rob's option would be sh shotgun and two extra ammo. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one. That would be one. But I think that's what we did before, no? That feels like what we did in the previous playthrough, right? Shotgun and two extra ammo. But that could have been in, like, uh, Dunwich Legacy or something. I forget, but I feel like we've done that before. But we'll put it as an option. Uh, shotgun, two extra ammo could be a thing. Um, but I would probably do a beat cop, a magnifying glass, and an Elder Sign Amulet, maybe? Or, that's kind of similar to this one. Or I would do like two emergency caches just for resources and draw, replace the ones that are in there. So we can draw into our pieces maybe and also afford them. That's four XP. And then for two more, I would just do like two magnifying glasses maybe, just to improve our chances of getting it. Or maybe a magnifying glass and extra ammo. But I like, like there is options with just the core set. Like it's crazy there's that many choices, right? Just with the first scenario and the first six XP. Uh, I like that. Bob says we did shotgun before, it was horrible. <laughs> Oh man. All right, here we go. Let's uh let's do uh which upgrades. Okay, I'll make the poll and then uh whoops, what did I just click on? Upgrades. Okay, so first option was uh charisma. Charisma mag glass and beat cop a second option was badge and psychopedia mag glass and ammo oh it just fit okay Third option, shotgun, and two ammo. And the fourth option, I would do um, Elder Sign Amulet. Elder Sign Amulet. And the reason why I'm doing Elmer's on Amulet is if I'm like, you know, thinking it, this is like kind of like an extra ally in my deck is how I look at it. But I get to put it in, it doesn't take up the ally slot. So it's just like another place I can put horror. And since Roland is so low on it, it's just my fear. I, I would hate a scenario to end, especially when I'm only starting out with four. Because remember, I have a mental trauma. I start every scenario with one horror. So that's just my theory on that. That's like why I'm thinking Elder Sign Amulet. And then I definitely like Beat Cop. Oh yeah, I forgot about the emergency cash. Um, hmm. We'll do Elder Sign Amulet, Beat Cop, and... No, let's do not Beat Cop. Let's do Elder Sign Amulet, Emergency Cash. I'm just trying to make like kind of different options. Cash. Uh, mag, actually, cash times two. We'll say cash times two. So that's four with the cash. Oh no, the amulet, sorry, is three. Hmm. Okay, then we'll do cash, and then we'll do mag glass. Shotgun. 
Should I take off the shotgun one? R2. Yeah, sorry, Janet. We got chose resolution one. We burned our house down, which caused us a mental trauma. <laughs> it wasn't my choice. I had, I had nothing to do with it. What did I do? Is it something too big? Sorry, guys. Bad. Okay. Sorry, there's too much text in one of the options. Okay, I just threw all the options in. Uh, you guys can vote and choose which uh, path we go with here, and then we'll edit our deck in Arkham Cards. Uh, we're playing as Roland. Roland Banks. Uh, again, we're only pulling from the revised core set. We're playing Roland Banks. And we're just playing solo. We just played through the first scenario. And we're going to be back tomorrow playing the second and maybe even third scenario. Uh, I, I assume we'll have enough time to get both in. We'll play a little quicker in those ones. We'll do the deck upgrading and stuff again uh, between scenarios. But I have that scheduled for tomorrow, noon Eastern, I believe. Uh, you can find a link to that down in the playlist description. Or in the video description, there's a playlist uh, for the revised core set. Something there I put. Uh, you can click in there. You'll see, you can see the unboxing if you're curious. Uh, what comes in the set, what's different with the art, what different cards are included, um, the different tokens, the cool Mythos bag, all that stuff. Um, yeah, you can check that out there. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, you guys can choose. And I'll leave the pull up for like a minute. Um, or not a minute. I'll leave it up for a few minutes. Just while I'm trying to buy time here. <laughs> so yeah, we're just playing with just revised core set. We're play I'm trying the solo. This is literally my first time I played this game solo ever today. Uh, so I appreciate all the help and the fun. Uh, I look forward to playing more tomorrow. And then next week we're going to play solo again. Uh, but my plan is to play the return to Knight of the Zealot with a Roland deck that's not a starter deck. And then we'll, we'll see how it's different. That's my, uh, that's my theory. We'll see. I want to see how they change it up with a return to box. It should be fun. Should be fun. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> and yeah, if you guys have any newbie questions about the game, like, um, you know, don't feel stupid. Ask. If you have any questions if I'm going too fast on things or something you don't understand or you want an explanation on why a certain card, you know, maybe we're looking at or whatever, hopefully I can help or someone in the chat can. Because um, I'm doing this for like, hopefully new players can watch this video, kind of who maybe are find the core set daunting, the revised core set. You get it, you're like not sure what to do or how to play. Hopefully watching this play of this and like kind of like decisions we go through and some like bring up the live chat uh, archive if you're watching this later and you can kind of watch oh, I guess you wouldn't know by now you already watched the whole thing if you heard me now but that's my theory is uh, so you guys can uh, yeah just follow along and it kind of will make it not seem so daunting I don't know that's my theory <laughs> hey Bruges what's up <laughs> it's my boy <laughs> how's it going uh, but yeah hopefully it's helpful I, I just hope it helps someone out because like I've already played the core set many months ago. We had some fun with it. I do want to play the return to box very much. Uh, so part of this helps me. Uh, it reminds myself of how the core set was because we played a bunch of cycles since, right? A bunch of different campaigns. So we're trying to remember what happens in the first one. Uh, yeah, I know specific things, but most of it I forget. All right, let's close up the poll and see what the results are. And we'll see those in the live chat uh, in a second here. All right, looks like Charisma, Magnifying Glass, and Beat Cop got 50% of the vote. Shotgun with the two ammunition uh, is 27%. The Elder Sign Amulet, Cash, and Magnifying Glass is 13 And the Badge, Encyclopedia, Magnifying Glass, and the Ammo was 9%.
Thank you, everyone that voted. All right, so we're going to go with, what is it? Charisma, a magnifying glass, and good old Bob the Beat Cop. Right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we know that Beat Cop is just going to re replace itself? Or we're actually, oh, no, no, we might be replacing other stuff. Let me go find Yogi's comment. Because we don't have to uh, replace it, right? Like one for one. Uh, what did you say? What did Yogi say? Charisma three. Charisma just goes in, right? Because it's permanent, if I remember correctly. So that doesn't have to replace anything. It starts in play. I don't think it counts towards your deck, right? Uh, magnifying glass one. Replace medical text. Yes, I like where this is going. We're replacing junk cards. So we spend one XP to replace a medical text, okay? So with a nice magnifying glass uh, upgrade. So now we technically have two magnifying glass. One's just good and the other one's great or both great, one's just more great, okay? And then uh, Beat Cop 2 to replace Mind Over Matter. Yes, okay, good. We're not replacing the Beat Cops and the magnifying glasses. I was hoping that wasn't the case. Get rid of the junk cards, put in more consistent, better cards, I'm down. So that way we have better chances of seeing uh, Beat Cop and allies, and with the Charisma it helps, right? Because we added in another ally. Uh, what was I looking for again? Mind over matter, uh, this one. Get out of the deck, these cards are junk. When I was looking through the card, the deck yesterday, I was like, oh man, I gotta play with this thing. Uh, it, they're fine, they're fine. I definitely wish I was playing like with more players at the table, I would play with these starter decks, and they'd probably be fine. Um, but yeah, just playing solo, it's like you're really at the mercy of what you draw and no one else to help you get out of it. Okay, so these are out. So let's modify our deck here in Arkham Cards. Let's see if we can do this without tr much trouble. So we replaced... Where is it? Mind over matter. Get it out. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Is this an upgrade button? Oh, that would just go to the next level or something, right? I'm afraid of pushing that. We'll just take it out. And we're going to take out medical text, which I think I already scrolled by. Okay, those are out. It's telling us, hey, Rob, you don't have enough cards in your deck. What are you doing? Now, how do I add cards? Search for a card. Okay, so let's see how this works. Charisma. Perfect. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If I push the plus. Did that work? I don't know if it worked. Nope, it didn't work. I didn't click on it. Oh, there we go. I just put a plus. Ah. Huh. Genius. I love it. Love it already. All right. Uh, what's next? We need a mag. A fine glass. Okay, which one? Uh, we need the one XP version, right? You see a little dot there on the left, I think. Put one of those in. Wait a second, what's happening here? Oh, all eligible cards, and then what we have in the deck. Oh, that's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. This, uh, <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Um, and then a beat cop, right? And it is the two experience beat cop. Put it in. So now, oh look, it says we spent six of six XP and we have 30 out of 30 cards. Now if we go back. Yeah. I'm sure this would be a lot easier if I wasn't using a mouse and just actually touching the screen on the phone or tablet, but <laughs> at least I can show it to you guys on the screen easy here. Uh, let's see. So how we hit the check? Oh, look at this. I'm I'm kind of blown away here. This is like super cool. <laughs> Bob, I was I was scared putting the shotgun in the list. Cuz it just feels right like you have the 6 XP, 2 extra ammo and a shotgun, you know, like just seems like a fun little thing, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, I shouldn't have done it. It was a risk. I mean, it, it was second place on the vote, so it's funny. We are playing on easy, so maybe it wouldn't hurt us as much. 
It is kind of a weird card. That's all I'll say. So our deck is updated. Now what do we do? Go back. Saved. Done. And then and then tomorrow we'll just click start on the midnight mass. And I'll do it at the start of the stream. Uh, I should have done this at the beginning to get us started. Uh, it would have been cooler to like look through this instead of the book, but uh, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. Free to use app. Check it out. Arkham cards. Arkham cards, ladies and gentlemen. Arkham cards. Very cool. Very cool. All right. All right. Uh, I think that's it. I think we're good. I think we're ready for tomorrow. We have our deck updated. Um, and we're good to go. So these cards, we can uh, put these away. And hopefully we get to upgrade more next time. Oh, Charisma. forgot Charisma. I will sleeve Charisma in a different sleeve. I'll just put in a clear one so I don't accidentally mix it and shuffle it in, hopefully. Uh, so that starts in play. That starts in play. So we don't want to shuffle that in our deck because it's got the permanent keyword. And then... Oh, oops. So we're only pulling, so what you guys just saw upgrading, keep that in mind, because this is the same stuff uh, we'll be pulling from, hopefully, after the next scenario, too. So we could work towards some other kind of cards, make the deck a little more consistent, and get some stuff out, um, and kind of improve our deck as we go, which is part of the fun of this game. I, I love that aspect of it. it. It's just a lot better style, I feel, than, like, uh, Lord of the Rings LCG, right? Where you're, like, you play one scenario, you have a deck built, you know, you, you lose, then you totally, like, redo your deck, or change your heroes or whatever, then it's like, you know, you got to keep rebuilding your deck completely for this each scenario. But in this, it's like, I, I don't know, I just like the slow grind of like getting that your deck like upgraded as you go. I, I think it's really cool. And you kind of like bond with certain cards and you get other cards out that you're not having fun with that you just put in there because you had to. Um, but yeah. Uh, the mental trauma to the character uh, actually already happened in the app. It actually saved it. Uh, it, it based on the resolution we clicked, uh, it showed the mental trauma was there already. So don't let me forget that tomorrow, but hopefully it reminds us. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. I want to click through the Arkham Cards app, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully it tells us, like, you know, as part of setup, put the trauma on there. Uh, if it does, man, I'm never using printed, printed campaign sheets ever again. That will be awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a look at the revised corset, playing the first scenario. Again, if you're looking for what is all in the revised corset, we could pretty much go card by card uh, and check out everything uh, in an unboxing video I did. Uh, that is in the video description in the playlist section. You can find that. If you're looking for any other campaign playthroughs we've done, <coughs> excuse me, tickle, uh, you can check that down in the video description also if you'd like to support the channel. All that is down in the video description. Belko's asking, how do you compare it to co-op play? Does it feel more punishing? One sec, one sec. Excuse me while I just hack my brains out here trying to get rid of this tickle in my throat. Uh, compared to co-op play, I don't know. You know what I think it is? So far, obviously it's one playthrough, very small sample size. I don't know about it being punishing. Maybe it kind of can be because everything falls on one investigator. But the weird encounter deck draws not being consistent like you know there's not a second or third or fourth player drawing cards off that deck to see enemies like you know but maybe i play next time and it's literally five enemies on the top of the deck then it's like what do you do what do you do 
Like it could get crazy just because everything is falling on one investigator. So it could swing very gentle and it could swing very hard. Uh, but I, I get worried about you don't draw too deep into that encounter deck. So um, then there's also your own deck. So I was a little worried playing a starter deck, especially when I looked at it yesterday and saw basically every card's a one of. That scared the crap out of me because I'm like, if I have, and I know playing this game, if you're playing two player, one investigator can have bad draws for the beginning of the game, like have the worst mulligan ever and spend the first five or six turns of the game drawing cards, trying to dig for the pieces, put them into play. That's the way I play, right? If you don't have your pieces, you need them or good luck. And sometimes you have really slow starts to the game just based on a bad shuffle. Or, you know, like you could build the best deck, but it's like sometimes you just get all the cards you want to see later in the scenario. You get them at the beginning. What do you do? What do you do? Um, you got to waste action after action, drawing cards or just try to make the best with what you got. But usually with another investigator at the table, you hope that you both didn't have bad draws so they can kind of pick up some of the slack. They can help you with enemies. They can help you get clues. They can help you move around. You know, they can distract enemies while you move. They can use cards to pull you and push you and, you know, all these kind of things, right? Um, and then you don't have to focus on being good at everything or being a jack of all trades, right? You can specialize and have some really powerful effects. It's hard to do that, I think, with one investigator. But again, I'm probably not playing the class that is the jack of all trades class anyway, playing uh, Guardian, but um, who would that be? Survivor, probably? Or maybe Rogue? I, I don't know. I think Survivor, right? Um, but I guess it would depend on the, the investigator also. But so far, it seems fine. It definitely feels weird only seeing one encounter card come off the deck around. And that doesn't feel too scary. But then again, it all falls on you. So I don't know. Definitely the game's quicker to play. Uh, it is weird not discussing things with Mel every time something's going on and when it's like the lead investigator chooses or one investigator at the table has to take this damage or this horror or draw this, it's only you. So it's like, it feels weird that uh, I like that aspect of the game is missing of discussing strategy. Thankfully, like with most games, I'm playing them live with you guys solo. So like, I I'm like playing with a bunch of friends here basically, and we're just discussing strategy as we go. And I'm not just talking to myself which is, uh, you know, it makes solo to me more bearable because a lot of the, these games, these co-op games, I love the working as a team, working together, trying to solve the puzzle, and not everything falls on you. I like that. I like that whole teamwork idea. Uh, as much as maybe I don't sometimes show it. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely like it, and I think that's part of what co-op games shine. And when you're playing a co-op game true solo... It, all that goes away and then it's just like you're playing a kind of a puzzle game by yourself like a solitaire puzzle game which is not a bad thing but it is cool to bounce ideas and strategies off of you guys in the chat and discuss stuff and yeah i, I like it because honestly i got into the hobby to play because of the social aspect the, the getting into play with in person and disconnecting from the technology and stuff and uh again i say this all the time but that's why i don't play solo as much as i probably should because it's like not why I got into the hobby. I got into the hobby when I saw Game of Thrones, the board game second edition, and saw, you know, you could play six players around the table, you know, trying to outsmart each other and backstab each other and lie to each other. And, you know, oh, such a beautiful game. But uh, anyways, that's what got me into the hobby was that. But I do love these kind of co-op games too. But playing solo, it definitely feels like the balance is there. It definitely doesn't have that issue so far. I can't see it having that issue um, that like Mansion of Madness does where you play with two investigators, it's not balanced. Um, or what else? There's other games too. Uh, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, you know, that kind of stuff um, where it's weird. It feels like the solo game in this. It's like it scales properly. I think. I think the only issue is, again, the classes and the uh, investigator, if they don't cover some of the things a second player can, you might get into trouble. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to play this more solo. I definitely want to try more solo and try it out. Uh, I definitely would love to play this game solo. I love playing Marvel Champions solo. I think that game is great solo. I love the puzzle of, uh, you know, spending uh, the, the, the multi-use cards out of your hand. I love that in that game. Um, and I feel that game scales very well. But again, 
yeah, we'll see. Well, I, see, I feel this would be similar. But again, having, having to take all the punishments. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Bob says the upside of solo is only one encounter card draw per round. The downside is that the wrong encounter card can wreck you. Oh, the wrong card drawn can wreck you. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's true, right? Because in this game, I find that there's certain encounter cards that can be like, like show stopping, right? If you like literally, like sometimes you draw a card and it's like, you could put this card in front of any investigator. And if it's only you, like even the one where like, uh, I, I couldn't play an asset or event on my turn. We've seen where that's like very much screwed us in regular two player play that we play on the channel, right? So with a solo, like, you know, sometimes another investigator gets that and it's like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll play this asset, I'll help you out or whatever. I'll play this event and help you, you know? But uh, in this one, yeah, if you're, you're just stuck, you're just stuck. It's, it's, yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that where it can wreck you completely. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, if that happens like too often, then maybe, yeah, maybe it wouldn't be that great of a solo game. But I definitely love playing this game two player and I wanna play it more player. I wanna, I wanna try it with more players for sure. Um, yeah, so far solo seems fine, but I've only played one scenario. Uh, so we'll see tomorrow. Maybe I'll get all frustrated and not wanna play ever again. <laughs> Yogi says, don't worry, I was playing Spider-Woman versus Kang yesterday and got the discard all events in your hand encounter card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that game can do it too, right? That game can have things that wreck you. Uh, like just from the base uh, agenda set in that game, the one with the red skull on the card. What's that one that comes out and like uh, just makes the villain scheme? In solo, that card can literally like just destroy you uh, completely. Like no nothing you can do. Or even uh, sometimes your uh, obligation, or not obligation, your, um, yeah, it is, what's the one that comes out? No, uh, the one with the Spidey Sense art on it, that comes out and makes you put in your side deck uh, with your uh, Nemesis or whatever. That one in Marvel Champions can just like completely wreck you playing solo too. Uh, if all of a sudden that comes out at the wrong time, you, yeah, you're just wrecked. <laughs> oh. And Bob says, the one that will kill Roland is the test will and take a whore equal to how much you fail by. Yeah, I was worried about that card. We almost had it come out twice. We almost had that come out twice, actually. Which uh, I was a little scared of there. No worries, KJ. Thank you so much for being here. No, you're awesome. You're awesome. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely play tomorrow. We'll be playing tomorrow again, noon Eastern, same time. It'll be a much longer stream. We'll play two scenarios. We'll do the deck upgrading. Uh, I'm back tonight in about three hours. We're going to be back playing Elder Sign. So if you want to check that out, uh, you know, uh, just check the youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Uh, you'll see them in the upcoming live streams. Actually, I probably should bring up a few more because, uh, yeah, one sec. Yeah, I thought so. All right, yeah, because I have more of their scheduled. Yeah, more stream scheduled, I don't want to forget. Uh, so we're watching this one right now. Okay, it's live. Oh, it's live, I gotta go. Uh, I'm just joking. All right, so yeah, tonight we have Elder Sign. Tomorrow we're playing part two of this campaign playthrough. Uh, on Saturday, still haven't decided on the scenario yet, uh, but we're playing Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. On Sunday, we're playing Horrified. So join in for that. I don't know what, we're, what monster we're playing yet or anything in that one. So if you got any recommendations, uh, join us in at the beginning of the stream and help us figure it out. Uh, and then on Monday, we're, Kyle's back joining us for three, more three-player Mage to Madness. Not Tuesday, it's Monday this week. Uh, and we're playing Murder on the Stargazer Majestic playthrough from the Horrified Journeys expansion. Uh, so tune in for more Mage to Madness. So if you notice, those have been paying attention. If you're watching this later, uh, all October 2021, uh, we're basically playing horror-themed games, which is basically a ton of Arkham Files games. And yes, Heather, if you're watching this later, I did see your recommendation to play Hexplore It, um, the domain of Mirza Noctis, which technically is a more like Transylvania Halloween-themed game. The only thing is I have a prototype only. I don't have the full game of that yet. 
Uh, so I, I don't know about playing the prototype of it again, but uh, I definitely am looking forward to that game coming because I, I, I know there were some things changed gameplay wise. Uh, even as we were playing our live stream, I was talking to Jonathan about things he was changing uh, in the game. So I'm looking forward to that stuff um, when we finally get the game. Uh, Bucknut says, thanks for the stream, Rob. I've been waiting to jump into Arkham with the new box. This is great. Yeah, try the new box if, if, if you're not even sure about the game. Like, uh, yeah, it is $60 to try it, but you can always sell that to someone else, I'm sure, um, if it's not your type of game. But I think like the core set's still a good value. It's not as cheap as the previous one because you're getting more cards, more options, more tokens, a mythos bag, better, better insert, all that stuff. It's definitely worth it, I think. Plus the errata in the rule books and things, uh, the better learn to play guide. It actually has better pictures and a flow to it and stuff. Um, so I definitely am going to re recommend this as still as a place to start, but it is more expensive. But yeah, you try it out. You spend a few hours, uh, you know, fiddling with decks, playing through a campaign. And if it's, if you like it, if that's for you, it's for you. It, it's more of that as you deep, deep dive into the game, but I like that all you have to do is get the core set. You get a good taste of everything. You can try every class. You can try some deck building. You try the upgrading. You try a campaign out, uh, you know, and you can try up to four players now. So if you want to see what the game plays like at four players, you don't need to go chase down investigator starter decks. You don't have to buy a second core set. You don't have to buy, you know, other expansions. Um, so for 60, you can try this game out in even more variations and see if it's your type of game. And if you've never played an LCG or a CCG or something where you build decks before sitting down, uh, that might not be your jam. But at least in the course that they give you some cards to try that with, you know, to see and tweak. And if, if you're not into games where you're tweaking cards between plays and stuff, like tweaking decks, I should say, um, then maybe it's not for you. That's the only thing, but yeah. Oh, look who decided to show up. Mr. Darren Reeves, I did this only for you and you didn't even show up. Give him a boo in the chat. Boo. Boo, Darren. I'm just kidding, Darren. I'm just kidding, Darren. I'm just kidding. I, I yeah, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> uh, you missed it. Don't worry. We're back tomorrow, Darren. Noon Eastern. Playing some more. We're going to play Scenario 2 and 3 of Night of the Zealot. Core set only. We already upgraded our cards. Yeah, so tune in for more Arkham Horror this week and more next week. We'll be back. So, yeah. <laughs> Darren bugs me every stream Darren trolls me comes into the streams or leaves in the comment section on videos that I need to play more Arkham Horror I think David David uh, does too and uh, yeah so hopefully you're happy for now are you not entertained are you not entertained yeah so there you go <laughs> I'm just joking but yeah <laughs> uh, hopefully we get edge of the earth soon hopefully we get that soon I would love to play that new expansion. I cannot wait to get those. Uh, supposedly some people already have the player card expansion for that. Uh, everyone's just waiting for the campaign box, I guess. Um, but yeah, as soon as we get that, you're going to see Mel and I playing through that blind on the channel. Uh, so yeah, join in for that too. Stay tuned. Lots of Arkham Horror on the channel coming, uh, whether it's board or card game or whatever. But lots of Arkham LCG for sure. Uh, we're going to keep playing. We still have uh, two other campaigns to play. We have a whole bunch of return to boxes. We have a whole bunch of standalone scenarios. I have tons of investigators. I don't even want to think of how many investigators I've never tried yet. I have classes I don't even think I've ever played. So yeah, uh, lots of diving deep uh, in this rabbit hole of Arkham Horror LCG. So stick around. Tons of that coming. Yogi, I, I haven't looked. I haven't looked at any of the new expansion stuff. I think I read one of the intro articles like months ago, and I purposely just not been looking at spoilers. I haven't watched any unboxings. I just know that I saw online people posting about the investigators. So I assume people have it, but maybe they just were talking about it from an article. But no, I, I haven't looked at anything from Edge of the Earth yet. Um, but what I plan to do is when we get it, uh, I'm just going to look at the box. Mel and I are going to crack it open. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do an unboxing. I don't know. I, I don't know if I should. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm... I'm um, what do you call it? I don't know if I'm... Um, qualified to go through a new expansion yet and kind of judge cards and talk about card effects and stuff. I get worried I'm going to see a bunch of weird rules and stuff that I don't even understand the interactions and things. Um, but maybe, maybe we'll be fine. So I'll look at it. Maybe we'll crack it open live on the channel, take a look at it, uh, the player cards and stuff. 
and then maybe on stream we can choose what we play. Uh, but maybe we'll do a poll. Maybe Mel and I will just look at the box and kind of just pick our own investigators and start with it. Uh, but yeah, we, we could talk in the Discord and, and figure something out too. There's nothing weird? Oh, okay. I don't know. I just know it's like, what, expansion? It's like cycle number, what is it, six or seven or something? I just don't know if they're getting more crazy with it. I'm hoping it's, it's very new player friendly. Like, I'm hoping they scaled it back a bit so it's closer to like, you know, Dunwich Legacy kind of complexity and stuff for new players to experience, but uh, we'll see. Oh, UK got it. Everyone else, no. Oh, Bob says, I believe the queen intervened and made sure we got it first, Yogi. Oh, okay, okay. That sounds about right. <laughs> oh, man. Like, it's crazier, but not insane. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, because some of the investigators, when I was reading Investigators Yogi, looking at investigators from later expansions, uh, I'm reading them and I'm like, I, I, they're like, it's like, what? And their deck building restrictions, all this craziness. It's, it's like, it gets pretty much out there. Even the ones we played in the last one were kind of like, they're definitely not a new player friendly way of playing, right? Like they're like more advanced play styles, which is totally fine. You need that in the game to keep the hardcore player like wanting to come back and try new things. I totally get it. But I was just, I'm hoping that it's not too nuts because it's literally like the first of a new distribution model. I kind of wish that they did um, Dunwich Legacy first. The reboxing of that was coming out first and then, you know, like maybe they released that a couple months back and then they, they were coming out with Edge of the Earth. I, I wish. So that new players getting the revised core set would have something else, you know, or, or they came out the same time and there was a revised core set. So then new players who like get the revised core set, play the crap out of it in a weekend, you know, then they'll like, all right, I need more. I need more. You know, I want to build decks. I want to build decks. I need more player cards. Uh, then they could just grab the uh, repackaged new distribution format uh, for Dunwich Legacy. But it sounds like we're going to be waiting till like sometime next year for that, which kind of sucks. So most players are going to get the revised core set. New players, they're going to get the revised core set, play the crap out of it. And then their option are go chase down old packs and stuff, which I don't recommend doing. Or they wait uh, for Dunwich Legacy, or they get Edge of the Earth, or they go get some standalone scenarios. You know, go find uh, Curse of the Roguru, which I've seen has been in print lately, uh, and or like Murdered Excelsior Hotel or something like that. You could get the starter investigator packs. Yeah, for more player cards. For more player cards, yeah. You could get, if they're in stock, yeah, you can get the starter investigator packs. That's another thing to get. It's just you don't get any more scenarios. So you're just kind of replaying the same three scenarios over and over again, right? Unless you get the return tonight of the Zealot box. If that's easy to find, I don't know. So yeah, lots of paths still to go, but I just wish for the new distribution model, they had it ready right away. Um, and because Edge of the Earth is going to be the first product, that stores are going to be promoting and stocking right after the revised core set. I feel a lot of new players are going to maybe grab that first. So hopefully it's a good, you know, it, it, the transition from Night of the Zealot into Edge of the Earth is not, you know, going to make their heads hurt. That's, that's all I hope. I hope that's the way it works. Of course, six months from now, that none of that matters because hopefully they can just grab Dunwich Legacy if you're getting into the game. You know, if you're watching this six months, a year from now, uh, yeah, hopefully you just grabbed Dunwich Legacy, you know, the player box and the, the campaign box and just, you know, started, started there after the revised core set. Darren says, my local game store has several of the starter packs and standalones. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's not like that everywhere, I find. Uh, but it seems like it, it got a good, like they, this summer, it feels like they got uh, a good reprinting out there of things, I feel. Janet says, do you recommend the standalone scenarios while I wait for Edge of the Earth to ship? <laughs> uh, I want to wait for the repackaging of Dunwich Legacy. Uh, Janet, if you can get the Curse of the Roguru, uh, I, I, I mean, just for another scenario to replay a few times, I, I think that's a good product. Like, we played that a handful of times, and I had fun still playing it. Uh, and remember, when the game came out, um, it came out a month early at Arkham Knights 2016. And actually, at Arkham Knights, players came there, and they were allowed to get the core set and that standalone early uh, by a month. So a lot of players spent the weekend at Arkham Knights 2016 
just playing the core set with friends and playing that first scenario uh, actually released before Dunwich Legacy. So most players, their first experience coming to the game when it launched was playing the core set and playing Curse of the Rogue Roost standalone and playing those over and over again, waiting for FFG to ship out uh, Dunwich Legacy. So if you can go get Curse of the Roguru and just want something else to play, but the hotel is awesome. Exactly, Darren. The hotel scenario, when I looked up, when I got the game, uh, when I got this game like a year ago, I remember not being able to get all of Dunwich Legacy yet. And I remember, you guys know what we went through, those who are watching. We were like, I don't know if we're ever going to play it because I can't find all the cards. Uh, thankfully, Shamar, our friend, was able to get us the first two cycles uh, that he had already collected. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, otherwise, I started Googling, uh, you know, what to buy for standalone scenarios. Are they a good for new players? Is it a good stepping point off the core set? And what I read was, you know, the best standalone scenario, even for your first standalone, even before you get into Dunwich, is the murder at the Excelsior Hotel. It's not too crazy. It has literally 10 different endings, I think it was. So you could replay the crap out of that one and try to get all the different endings, try different player counts, different classes, different investigators, even just with the core set. There's a ton of game in that Murder at the Excelsior Hotel. Um, but Curse of the Roguru, not as crazy, not as many endings and stuff. But the cool part is it's not m any more advanced than the scenarios you'll find in the core set. So you're not overwhelmed having to know a whole bunch of other keywords and all this crazy stuff. Um, and it has some replayability to it and it's not as expensive. Um, and it seems to be in print. So, I mean, if you think you're going to collect all this stuff anyway and you just want some more variety, also the standalone sets are a nice way if you just want to play a single game night with your game group and you don't want to start up a whole new campaign and print campaign sheets and build decks and find all your upgrade cards, you can just play those standalone scenarios. In fact, you can play any scenario in this game standalone. Um, but those standalone scenarios are meant to be played on their own, you can tell. Uh, and it's nice just to pull out to play as a single session with somebody. You know, you're going to a game, board game night at the, your local game store, you're going to a convention, you're playing with friends. I probably would just bring a standalone scenario to play, um, you know, with everyone at convention. Most of them are designed to be played at conventions. They actually release them at conventions. Uh, or Arkham Knights or whatever, you know, like those kind of conventions. Or Gen Con or whatever. Um, so yeah, if, if you're looking for more of that, because sometimes playing some of these other scenarios standalone, uh, I, they would work, but it's like, you know, the, the campaign scenarios are better obviously playing as part of a campaign, which you can do with the standalone scenarios. So you could play Knight of the Zealot and get Curse of the Roguru, the standalone scenario, and play it in the middle of your Knight of the Zealot campaign from the core box. So now you have four scenarios to play in your campaign which is kind of neat. Same thing with the murder at the Excelsior Hotel. You could play that in the middle of your Night of the Zealot campaign. I think they all cost XP to go to, but uh, you could definitely add to your core set by getting standalone scenarios. They're not completely their own product. They can be worked into a campaign. In theory. Kendra is saying, I'm excited for the new method of selling cycles. I hope it extends to Lord of the Rings Revised, as I've never played that game. I don't know what they're going to do with that game. Did they say? I don't know if they said they're going to do a new release model for that game or not. I don't know. But, like, I hope they do. If they're bringing out a revised core set, they're obviously trying to rope in new players, so... Yeah, we'll take a look at that. That Lord of the Rings revised core set, we're going to play with that on the channel as soon as I can get a hold of it. Um, but yeah, and we'll play through the campaign in that one. We'll try to get that new expansion, uh, mix that in the campaign for Lord of the Rings and play with that too. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back in a couple hours. We'll be playing some Elder Sign. Then we're back tomorrow with more Arkham Horror. And uh, yeah, join me for that. Thank you all for your help today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for the support. Thank you for new Patreons, new donations, all that stuff. Thank you for helping me fund the crazy hobby of gathering Arkham expansions. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.